trapped in an eternity of vapid space. Doomed to wander the galaxy. Broadcasting their nonsense to the void. This is StarCast. Hi, my name is Chris Robbins and welcome to StarCast. Hello, everybody. Hi, Geek No More. <laughs> We're, yo, yo, yo. What happened? What happened? Nothing. No, nothing. No, nothing. Nothing at all. Oh, well. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to StarCast. Tonight we have a special guest, Geo Get Money. Salute. What's going on, people? How you doing, Geo? Good. Hanging in there, man. Doing good. And we have a regular Mr. Trendane. Yeah. <laughs> and then Clifford, a.k.a. Miku. Hello. Hello, Clifford. Sorry, I got this stuff going on in the background. So, uh, Geo. Geo, Geo. Tell us, a little bit of, tell us a little bit about yourself, what you're doing on the uh, with StarCast, Star, Star Citizen and shit. Uh, well, pretty much. Pretty much. I'm just, oh, sorry, right. I'm just a uh, YouTuber who likes to do uh, Star Citizen vids and put Star Citizen more on the map than what it already is. I'm a heavy supporter of it. I like the way they develop um, the game, and I think more games need to be developed like it. And a lot of people don't have the facts straight with the game, so I like putting them in check sometimes here and there. <laughs> right, so we brought you on the show tonight because uh, you did a show, I did a, uh, a video called, uh, which I'm showing on the screen right now, um, Star, so what is it? Star Citizen's the Worst Fail or something? What, how does it go? Most likely biggest, biggest flop. flop. Most likely biggest flop. There we go. Mm -hmm. So, uh, tell us I about almost, what, what's I going on. I almost didn't watch it. I almost didn't watch oh, it. Too. I, I, Clifford, I, I, Clifford, I, put, <laughs> Clifford put it in, and I said, I said, oh, I don't, I don't, uh, I, I don't want to watch this. It's probably gonna exactly. be some guy ragging on the fucking game again. I'm so sick and tired of hearing about all these people ragging on the game and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, what, that. well and when I, and what it brought me to it was as I was watching um one of the Star Citizen videos and it hit popped up as the next one in the play role on Twi Twitch so I was like oh what's this I haven't seen this one before and I watched it and I start cuz I didn't even pay attention to the title I just anything Star Citizen I watch it and mm -hmm. that's when after I got done with it I was like oh no I'm got to watch this shit <laughs> <laughs> So the that basis is. of your argument is that um um, yeah, and I made the same. I made a very similar kind of argument this back for the Guild Wars too. That um, it, people that are complaining about this game are saying that it's uh, um, you're spending way too much money because mm -hmm. you know it, you're spending you know a hundred dollars on a ship. And uh, I said the same thing with um, with uh, with Guild Wars two was that it was free to play, and people were like, but you know you could buy you could buy stuff in the cash shop and you'll spend some money on it. You'll spend you know you, before you know it, you'll spend twenty five thirty bucks on this game and it's supposed to be free. Yep. And I'm like, well, you know, I, I, with uh, World of Warcraft, uh, you've been you've been playing World of Warcraft for all these years, and you've probably spent, you know, I added, I did a whole math thing with the calculator and everything, and uh, you know, you've probably spent three thousand dollars so far on World of Warcraft, and you're complaining about a, a game that I've spent a hundred dollars on here. Yeah, that's true. That's how it usually goes. Like even with um some of these other games with special editions, you know, a lot of these people like the Titanfall special edition was two fifty. I heard no one say shit about that. Um, they got new Borderlands, like the whole collection. It comes with the robot too, but it's like four hundred dollars. No one says a word about that, but everyone wants to come at Star Citizen, the big dog, with all all its success. So that's what just pisses me off about. It. And a lot of people don't have their facts straight. It's only a certain amount of people that are spending like three hundred fifty dollars and more. Like yeah, most the guy of the right over there. <laughs> like most of the most of the guys really on who like half the game they said most of the people got the cheaper packages. I think actually a little more than half, I think they said on one of the around the verses, I think, or mm -hmm. Temper the Chairman, I forgot which one, but Chris Roberts was talking about that. So it's just a lot of people just don't have their facts right. I love how you called out uh, Brendan Drain, who is a longtime Eve fanboy, 
um, oh, for, for ragging on Star Citizen. It was, God, uh, was good awesome. catch. Good catch. <laughs> Yeah, man. It, I mean, it's it's just ridiculous. And then a lot of people are saying, well, you could you could pay for in game, um, get the subscription in game, but how much grinding do you have to do for that? Like, I know for me, I work forty plus hours a week. I don't have that type of time mm -hmm. to grind the game to get in game cash. Well, I'd probably have a subscription. And I know a game that lasts for ten over ten plus years doesn't last off in game currency. So somebody's behind the damn subscription. <laughs> um, yeah. So the. Uh... That's the deal because, you know, and, and we made this argument here before saying that, you know, right now Star Citizens, what, what are we up to? 69 million? What are we at? Uh, we are uh, 71. 71. Jeez, I haven't looked in yeah, a couple of uh, 71, 491. All right, so we're 71 yeah, million dollars. People going, oh my God, that's a shitload of money. Well, yeah, that's a shitload of money for you to go home and buy groceries with, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's, uh, it's a lot of money that you can just, like, He's not going to be taking that money and going and buying an island in, in the Bahamas or anything like that anytime soon. What, what and the hell for, are your groceries made out of? <laughs> gold, gold. I get gold leaf in most of my stuff. I guess. Um, I and saffron. I just, uh, I take baths in saffron. So, um, the only time I've gotten anything gold leaf is gold slogger when I drink that. <laughs> you got to stop that. It's bad for you. Anyway, the uh, the fact is, is that that even at seventy one million, it's still not a lot of money for a triple A. You know, no, it's not. And, and what's good is that Geo points that out when he shows how much these other games have spent way before Star Citizen. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, people just sometimes don't research and don't comprehend. It it does take a lot of money, but, you know, and like you said in the video, a lot of it's bloated with marketing and other stuff, but, you know, we don't know that because, you know, they haven't really broken it out. They never do. Yeah, that's true. Right. They, ju they just said, we spent this amount of money on making this game. Well, you know, how much of that really did you spend on making the game and how much is bloated with marketing and you know, promo and getting on, you know, you no know, telling how much uh, Blizzard has spent, you know, when they had all them, you know, World of Warcraft uh, commercials with like Chuck Norris and uh, Mr. T. What about and, other cinematics? Oh, they're all epic. They're like little mini movies and those things aren't cheap. No, they're not. Not at all. So I guess the point is, is that people that are just like hating on Star Citizen have to have to like back off a little bit because they don't have all their facts straight. But, and that's what you say in your video over and over again. I think... I think people need to, uh, you know, like just take a chill and, and, and l educate themselves. You can't blame them, though, because I, I've said this before in other things that people only can pigeonhole so much stuff. You know, it's just you don't know everything about everything. You can't possibly, your brain can't remember every single minutia, minutia fact about something. So when somebody comes across Star Citizen and they don't know anything about it, they're going to rely on other people to sort of like digest it for them. They're pre chewing the food and they're like, oh, Okay, yeah, I get this. Uh, it's a game about space. Okay, cool. Oh, it costs that much to buy a ship? $5,000 to buy a ship? Oh, fuck that. It's pay to win. I ain't going to do it, right? Wouldn't, yeah, wouldn't even know. And they don't, they, don't, they don't take the time to learn it. And I think that's why it's great that you're out there sort of helping to educate people because that's, that's the issue right there. Yeah, that was yeah. the whole really point of the video. I just wanted to get that information out because if it takes my video just to post it somewhere to shut some haters down, I mean, so be it. Instead, you got to type out all that bullshit, try to explain it to him. Just, hey, if I got to absorb the hate, let it be. As long as the message gets out, which it is, that's all that mattered to me. Mm-hmm. Awesome. All right, well, most of us here in the audience are supporters anyway, so we're kind of preaching to the crowd right now, but or to choir, the choir. But, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, through time, the, the misinformation will spread. And if not, the sweet day will come at some point. The oh oh so sweet day, where we will sit back and be like, "I told you so," <laughs> right? Yeah, so well, even though there is some people, they I keep hearing this where everyone keeps telling me, "Well, the first guy had a bit of a point." Wham wham wham. Well, the dude pointed out the obvious. I mean, not everyone. He said not everyone's gonna be happy with a certain feature or something that they're looking forward to. I mean, let's be honest. Every game I played, there was something I didn't like. Nothing's perfect in this world at all. So mm -hmm. I don't understand how him bringing up the obvious was a point. I mean, like I wasn't looking forward to the racing. That was one of the expectations, and I ended up liking it. You know what I'm saying? All I'm worried about is the flight mechanics and the exploration and the FPS module. Everything else I don't really care about. And these people are calculating everyone's wallets and expectations and don't know what they're doing. So that just it just needs to stop. Like, why are you guys worried about everyone's expectations just worry about your game and let us worry about us you know exactly but we do have to kind of keep our we have to keep ourselves in check a little bit if we start 
going completely um, so fanboyish to the point where we were like, oh my god, when we get in, it's going to give us a virtual blowjob, and then, um, <laughs> then we're going to have, like, you know, free heroin. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's just it's just like we're we're we have to kind of roll back our expectations. I, it's going to be a fun game, obviously, mm -hmm. and it's going to be beautiful. And and, wa and watching the panel, uh, the panel uh, just a video a little bit ago, um, things they're talking about are just like wow, that's amazing. The the level of detail that they're talking about just from the AI alone, uh, it's mm -hmm. it's mind blowing, right? So yeah, the bars and the warp warp zones or whatever warp holes, mm -hmm. it looks, everything looks awesome. Yep. So I think that that's going to help reel it in. You know, to, to, to make it you know more beautiful and everything, but I, but we do have to kind of slow our roll a little bit when it comes to the expectations. And if we do, then I think we'll you know we'll be happy. Well, uh, you know, if they end up having a ship with you know blue pigtails on it, then I'm so I don't care. It could be shit. It could be crap. Speaking of which, um, they did talk about the customization, not only of the characters but of also the ships, and they're working on that. You want to guys? You gonna want to go in to start? To, by the way, everybody in the uh, audience, if you have any questions, please put them in the word. Put them the uh, question the word in, in brackets. Put them in brackets. Say question the word question in brackets, and then uh, I think it's Trendane's gonna grab them up tonight. Put them in chat. Oh, it's grabbing them. Yeah, and then he'll he'll ask he'll be asking the, answering the questions later on. We're all gonna answer them, but um, <laughs> hey, we're all answering them. I'm not doing that. By right, myself. He's, gonna, he's gonna he's gonna read the question and then we'll answer. It. He'll read it in his best voice ever. Well, I don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> Because much like various elements of the game, some people like one thing, some people like the other. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Let's go ahead and ask well, it. So let's start talking about the uh, the panels from PAX South. I thought the wood paneling was beautiful. It, it was. was it was excellent. Before. Reminded me very much of growing up in the 70s. The Aztec, you know, motif was a little odd. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. you mean the, the, okay, the panel, sorry. Twitch is twitching out right now, by the way. If you guys are having drop frames, blame Twitch. Uh, Actually, it, it, this is, you talk about the theater. Okay. When I first went there, it was, you know, we showed up there early because we were, you know, volunteer staff. And <laughs> the theater outside looked like shit. But you walk inside, it looks very nice. I was, like, surprised when I walked in the theater. I was like, holy crap. This actually looks like a very nice theater. Um, you know, because, yeah, they had to look, look like kind of the Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom with the glowing eyes and everything. So it was really... A well done theater inside and out and the staff was very very nice and very accommodating to sig so um really actually i wouldn't mind having it there again it was a very pleasurable experience can you give us oh hold on let's go back to this um so what were your what were your thoughts of that whole deal i mean uh, you were right there you watched it you actually trans you transmitted out and, and wtf osaurus uh played it on his channel right yeah it was squirrel yeah had his set up there and was uh, being able to do what he can to you know stream it out he was putting it out on you play and then squ and, tw and uh, wtf was restreaming it i think but um being there uh was it was um my first time actually being there in person at one of the star says events because of you know work constraints but it was the most epic experience I've had in a long, long time where I was finally felt I was in a place where I belonged. You know what I mean? It was like when you walk there, it was like-minded individuals. The James Pugh is just fun to be around. He's a good guy. Even though he's sweating bullets and running his ass off on getting everything ready, you know, kudos to him because he really stepped up and helped out a lot because Ben showed up, you know, about I guess 10 minutes later, 10 or 15 minutes later. So it was basically James was, you know, humping, getting it, you know, and getting everything together and going. And Dane, Cyberwolf has arrived. I, I see that. Sorry, yeah. I was distracted by James humping. Yeah, about the, <laughs> um, let me ask you something. Speaking of humping, did you get Chris Roberts' DNA, Clifford? That's the Scott. mission that you went there for? Well, um, there might be, some, like there, no, there might be some teardrops on the stuff that he signed for me. Be Were you yeah, crying well, or was he crying? No, he was. He was tearing up. Are you serious? The, Were you like... Yeah. Tell us. Tell, okay, go ahead. Tell okay. us the story. I need, we need the story now. Okay, first of all, when I approached him, okay, luckily I was the like the last one before we had to go on to the next panel. And so, because he, it was the, you know, kind of the intermission before the second half of which people, some people just purchased the tickets for the second half. So he was out there, you know, greeting everybody. We were sitting there in line. And... I get up there with my duffel bag <laughs> full of every game he's made, and I said, hey, Mr. Chris Roberts, I'm uh, 
Clifford, uh, a.k.a. Miku, from StarCast. And I've been following you ever since I was a little kid. And I reached out and started, he's like, well, this is a first. He said, this is a first. He said, you go to Greece, though, but you don't shake my head. You start reaching out. Well, I want to show you something. And then I started bringing out these games. He said, <laughs> he said, oh, my God. He said, are you serious? And, and even the two, because he had one guy that was watching his time. You know, because he was getting everybody a certain amount of time. Right. And then there was the other guy, like, just his eyes just, like, got big as saucers as I was, you know. And I didn't know they were taking pictures of me, you know, stacking them out. And then, all of a sudden, as I said, I said this, is, this isn't this is everything. Because I, you know, brought out the usuals. You know, he's seen time and time again, you know, his Wing Commander series, Freelancer, uh, I mean, Star Lancer and all that stuff, and, and Strike Command. It was when I brought out the three games that he made in the UK was when he was like, are you serious, Clifford? And he started, he said, I said, are you okay? He said, no. He said, I'm, I'm tearing up. This is the first <laughs> time I've seen. He said, one of those games I think I have in storage, but the other two I don't have. Oh, he should have given it to him. Uh, you know, and it was, and if anybody's <laughs> never, <laughs> I can't, I can't, it was hard enough for me to get these games. It was these three games right here. Wizardor was, you know, because in his little, at the BAFTA presentation, you know how he talked about Killer Kong was his very first one, but it wasn't his mainstream one in the UK. Mm-hmm. Wizardor was his first one, his first big hit. And then came Match Day, and then came Striker's Run. And when he saw those, he what was like... What systems are those, by the way? Uh, BBC Micro. You have one? Uh, yes, I actually do. It's in storage. Okay. That takes the cassette tapes, and you have to hook it up to your television, and it plays the cassette tapes, and you have like a separate key, big massive keyboard. I remember those. Yeah, and, it, and, and you play the game. And, uh, you know, he signed everything. He took pictures. He said, you know... <laughs> He, he just he, and we were talking about you know it's just he said this is why I love coming to these events is meeting people like you that really know what I'm about know who I am you know and I said you know it's like people know you for Wing Commander but they don't know you for like Times of War or they don't know you for Bad Blood I some sure of his as original these are his original games he made in the U S these are his first two yeah and you know. That's how long I've known him for so long, and I've and just I knew when I was approaching him, my heart was racing because I don't care, you know. WTF? When I was talking to him on Skype, he was like, you know, I know you were going fanboyism, and I said, why not? He is my he is the first person I've been wanting to meet my whole life, and just to meet him, and he has a charisma about him that you know he's genuine. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, you actually absolutely. talk to him, and he's real passionate and. After talking to him and then being backstage in the green room with uh, uh, Ben Lesnick, with James, with uh, Mark Skelton, uh, with, uh, what was his name, uh, Todd? Is it Todd? Tony. Or, Tony. Sure. Yeah, with Tony. You know. Tony and... Um, <laughs> Don't <Mr>. you know. <laughs> <laughs> and talking with them, and they were just, you know, telling me all that they've been working on and everything, and that, that and when I... And when I and I even told Chris how much I have spent, he said, "You don't have to prove it to me, son. Just seeing those proves to me you're one of the most one of the more passionate ones about about <laughs> you're what scaring I me." <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I say. But when I told when I told uh, Mark Skelton of you know how much I contributed, he said, "Man, thank you. You paid for my salary for an entire year, pretty much." Lee. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I know he no, you paid for the gold know. shirt. Yeah, you know, definitely. But uh, they were all really genuine. I mean, even after every panel, they get down there, shake your hands, talk to you, everybody, everybody group around them. And it was just, to me, that event, even though I'm going to be going to helping them on the South by Southwest, this event to me seemed more genuine because it didn't have all the lights and it had the cameras pre recorded and everything, but it was more down to earth, it seemed like. Mm hmm. Like you were talking to an average Joe on the street, but in game development, you know, and. I came back with it with a new resound. Like now, I'm just even more passionate about. I want to get as many people into this game as possible and push it as far as we can go. Because I know at the end of the day, it will meet somebody's expectations. Any facet of the game will meet somebody's expectations. True. Yeah, that, that's that's what I was saying. So a lot of people's expectations are going to get met, 
And I like that you got to uh, meet Christ Roberts himself. I'm I'm real <laughs> jealous. Don't even get the DNA. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm kind of jealous. You got to meet everyone. I hopefully I get the chance to go to one of those shows. But that's awesome that you got to, you got all those. Old, I didn't know he made all those other games. To be honest, you just put me up on uh, some new stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, where do you live at, Gio? I live in Chicago. Oh, that's not too bad. You could almost make PAX East. Yeah, I, I think I'm I'm gonna try it. So I was actually thinking about um next time they have the uh, Citizen Con. Uh, I think they said they're going to have it in UK. I, I got some buddies that live out there. I may take a flight out there. I know I have to see how much everything would be, but I'm thinking about it. Yeah. We know definitely a certain uh, bod will probably be going. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Which would be cool. Bod's in the audience tonight anyway. Hey, bod. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, and I'm kind of glad that they're actually changing up, you know, where the CitizenCon is held so everybody gets an opportunity to fill that star system star power i guess you could say you know what i mean mm -hmm. um and i think you know even more so just seeing their efforts of getting a germany up and going and and taking on uh the crytech engine with full force on what they can do i think this year will be the most content we've seen in a long time pushed out by them i think they're fixing a wide open on, on us well it also helps with looking at it from the game development perspective that they are now to a point where they've got their tools to make that content more or less in place and in play. So they're going to be able to crank out things a lot faster than they have before. Because they're having to build brand new tools for a lot of this. Yeah, it is true. But... Um... Uh, other than that, I mean, you know, getting lots of pictures with them and, and getting all their signatures. I mean, they seemed very happy to see that we brought posters for them to sign to give back to them, um, which a lot of people saw around the verse that Star Citizen Pack South was something we did up for them, for them, to, uh, for everybody there to sign. Um, you know, so that, you know, every year we would like to do that, something like that for them. Just to show, hey, we want to give back to y'all because y'all are making something other than just giving you money that we're real passionate about what y'all doing. Y'all are building something that we want to see happen. And y'all, you know, being on the forefront of giving us as much as y'all can without spoiling too much and, and helping the development is, is just, I think it's going to pave the way on the new way of doing games in general. And uh, yeah, that, that is what's needed too, by the way. Yeah. Because, and I, uh, boy, I'm well, sorry. Well, I was just, well, uh, when I think I think it'll happen when the game is complete, you know, it will never be complete, complete, but it'll when it comes out and it's successful, that's when all these big names like EA are going to start taking a hard look at their own development, probably. Yeah, I, I hope so, because like I said, um, I made a part two to that flop video. And the uh, thing I said is, like, Star Citizen, for a lot of us, is more than just a game. Like, this is a movement of how games get made. I like how pretty much since I filed the game since last year in January, every week there's videos and updates of what's going on, what's getting made, what's getting fixed. And I love everything about it. It's no everything's behind the curtains, even though they save some stuff for us as for a surprise. But... Everything's out in front where we can see what's going on in, in the alpha and betas and see what they're fixing. And I love that. Well, they're being very, uh, very open with it, by all means. Or Trendane. What? Your hat's fine. No, it. Uh, <laughs> Don't listen to internet people's. Don't listen. No. My hat's you, better. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Your hat is you better. You are an internet person, Domo, and I'm supposed to listen to you. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> see, see, see how it is? What are those on your shirt, by the way? These? Mm -hmm. Nipples? They're rabbits. Oh. Okay. It's, it's a rabbit eating a carrot, and a rabbit eating a carrot, and a rabbit eating carrot cake. And this rabbit's kind of like, mm -hmm, kind of arching an <laughs> eyebrow at this rabbit. And this rabbit is saying, it's got carrots. <laughs> Boba Fett wants to kill your rabbits. <laughs> Boba Fett has excellent taste in meat. Rabbit is delicious. Mm. So, I agree. But, my dad's a hunter. I had it before. <laughs> so what else do you... <laughs> Dumb um, pitch is muddy tasting. I don't like it. All right, so let's talk about some of the stuff we they talked they showed on the panel. Um, well, the, for, for the oh, first thing, oh, okay, oh, okay. Yeah. First thing I want to talk about is the um, the new pod. What was it called? It's pod six nine nine. No, <laughs> different pod. No, no, it's a pod six nine nine. Um, shit, I can't remember the name the of the sim pod. pod. Sim yeah, pod. Yeah, sim pod. Yep. Yeah. So what it's going to do? Um, sim is pie. Simpod noticed me exactly, Clifford. Exactly. Simpod noticed me. 
Uh, it's going to be a, kind of like a gateway to... Um, to uh, you won't have to go into a ship before you like climb up into a ship before you uh, you, end, yeah, you go into uh, the arena commander. Mm -hmm. so I'm trying to find a. Is this it? It'll basically be an arcade center. I know yeah. Sandy had a picture of like uh, the different ones they're doing on yeah, her Facebook. Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking on Facebook real quick to find it. Yeah. Um, you know, and and I can see where they're going with it because it does look. It does. It takes you out of the realism or being like. And in, plugged into the game when you're just having to press escape to get into a game or having to sit, you know, you being able to interact with the object within the universe and, you know, go and interact with it, get into the seat, and then it does this like, I'm thinking maybe like a honeycomb effect around you where everything warps out and then all of a sudden you're in virtual reality. I think it's going to add a very, very good touch uh, to the Arena Commander experience. At least you going into the game. We haven't. Uh, we've talked like, about this time and time again on this show that the whole going into your hangar every single time just so that you can go into Arena Commander is sort of a, you know, a crappy solution because you know you're you're having to load up three or four times into something. This doesn't even fix. This doesn't fix that problem though, because you're still having to go into the hangar. Then you open this up and you sit inside of it. So it, it replaces you having to climb into a ship. Uh, it does actually feel more virtual reality like, but you still have to load the hangar, which is a long, which is a huge loading thing. Whereas if you wanted to just jump in and go to Arena Commander, um, you're 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 not able to <laughs> bypass the loading of the the, uh, the hangar up. But uh, you know, I can understand though why they did that demo was because you know the future of the persistent universe that's where you're going to end up is your hangar you're going to first walk into your hangar either you're going to go into virtual reality or go out to your ship and fly out or go out to the landing pad where the bigger ship would be or take your shuttle up to your idris or whatever to fly out or to go to the stores in the elevator that they said they're going to put in you know i could see why it's there but in turn why it's in early development i could see why you know you would want maybe where you know the star citizen comes up and you hit play well they give you option play arena commander or play to your hangar mm -hmm. they could do that they could add a button go to your hangar or play arena commander but i can see why you have to go to your hangar because it makes sense if you're you know choosing your options but they could do that and maybe a user interface in front of you before you load out you know showing the ship in front of you and you scroll through and it's just you know just in front of you, basically, and you just pick your ship, pick your weapons, and go. They could do that, but since they've already built it out this way because they know they didn't want to, okay, we built all this stuff, but then and eventually we're just going to throw it away because in a PU, it's not going to be needed because you're going to go into your hangar. There's a pod if you want that, or go out to the verse. So I can, I can see why they keep it that way, mm -hmm. even though you know people might not like it, unfortunately. What are your thoughts, Trinday? Well... <clears throat> for one, Alex Vaughn's, you know, simulacrum death egg is really hysterical to me. That's what I was laughing about. <laughs> um, and <laughs> it just reminds me of a suicide booth. Yeah, just right. Going, How would you like to die? <laughs> the doors close. You just hear a scream like this. It's only one putty, quarter. This putty pours out. You know? <laughs> now, the, um, one of the things that, as someone who narrates the lore, one of the things that bothers me is like, I think it's in the narration for original system, well not in the narration, it is in the narration, but in the article or in the Galactic Guide entry for original systems, mm -hmm. it specifically mentions that the only computers that are capable of being fast enough and powerful enough to run Arena Commander is, this, is the computer that's inside your starship, which is why you have to play it from within your ship. Oh, I see. So that means that they're going to have to, there are several aspects of the lore that they're going to have to go back and change. Or they're going to have to just say, screw it and let it go. But as someone who narrates the lore, I don't like that idea, you know, because it's like, now I've narrated something that's no longer correct. It's like, I just did uh, the. Um, the, the, the um, uh, one thing where I was talking about the uh, crap, the um, the Idris, and it's still listed as a Corvette in the Galactic Guide entry, so it's going to have to be changed to be a frigate. And I almost changed it when I did the narration, but I was like, eh, eh. yeah, that's not what it says. <laughs> so I, I still went with what it says, and I just I, 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 sorry, sorry, <laughs> <I'm just laughs> spiraling out of control there. 
So good. that is mm -hmm. one of my biggest concerns. I agree that they should do it much like, and I think we mentioned this last week with um, Elite Dangerous. How when the when the loader pops up, you have the the option to choose going to the training missions or going into the game itself. Yeah, and they could do the same thing with Arena Commander. It's right. The sincerest form of flattery. Go ahead and copy what they do. Or or, um, or or make it a better interface or something, you know. But don't, but stop loading into the whole hangar every time we want to go play Arena Commander or something. Oh gosh, heaven forbid you mention Elite and Star Citizen in the same <gasps> sentence. Oh, we all play it. Now. It's okay. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. I got. I, I just uh, I just backed. Uh, what's the other game? Into the uh, Stars too. I like the way that game looks. I just backed that too. Don't tell Clifford. You'll probably buy it. Oh, it looks nice. You should. Into the Stars. Uh, I don't even know if I know that one. Into the stars, yeah, it's, uh, some people from Dice. They left. I guess they left Dice to form this game up, and the Kickstarter is still going on. We actually passed the pledge goal, so I think it was like eighty-five thousand. I think they're like ninety something thousand now. Looks good though. Should look mm -hmm. at the trailer for it. Hmm. Uh, I'm still, I'm still in uh, favorite. Also, I've been following Limit Theory heavily. Limit Theory? Guy. Yeah, it's a single guy doing this. Limit Theory. Uh, it's on YouTube. Just look up Limit Theory. He's taking his time. It's going to be a good game. And he's all doing it by himself. And he is awesome with his UI and everything. Oh, wow. I'm checking does it out right does now. He have a, does he have a Kickstarter? He did. He closed it out. There's only a certain amount of people that are testing it for him. But he's doing it. Because he said, uh, what I loved about this guy is he limited it because he said that I don't want y'all to think that I'm doing it for the money. We set that goal for that set amount. That's what I'm going to work with until mm. the end. What did he set it at? Close to, uh, I don't know. You have to look at the deal because he said it. Five dollars. <laughs> dollar <laughs> twenty. Three fitter. I need about three fitter. Three fitter. <laughs> three fitter. But yeah, uh, Limit Theory is going to be a good game. I think it looks uh, a little bit like um, it's kind of got that red hue from um, No Man's Sky almost. Like, yeah, it's just it's just another flavor of I'm just I'm just loving it that it seems like ever since Elite and Star Citizen, the Sims are back. Yeah, the Sims we're are uh, back. So yeah, the, the gates have opened, right? Yeah, yeah, because uh, I know in the '90s, man, I, I used to play like I said, um, the Star, all the Star Wars, the Tie Fighters, Colony Wars. I don't know if you could throw Rogue Squadron in there, Star Wars Rogue Squadron, but I used to play all those spaceship games. I'm glad they're coming back. The thing is also they tend to move in, in waves like that. I mean, we have a huge you know, thing of, of SimCity-ish games. We had all the roguelikes mm -hmm. for a while. Now Call we've of got Duty. You know, zombie games, Call oh, of God. Duty. Yeah, those kind now of run-off first-person shooter the, games. Yeah. Now the Star Simulators are coming in. So. Yeah. I don't know, if you look at FPS games, well, they had a nice long run. I mean, what kind of kind of like late, not, what, nine, late 90s, kind of till now, they've kind of just like evolutionized. <laughs> Okay, what, what do you want to do uh, next, um, after What's after the the pod do you want to know about? Um, Go ahead, just grab the topic. We'll talk about it. Okay, well, let's see here. They you know? finally started, well, they started digging deeper into the uh, their character models, um, what they've been doing, and, man, that was so interesting. I mean, just hearing the details of, like, the muscles. They're, they're trying to, because that's what they were commenting, uh, the rubber man that they showed dancing. But they're at yeah, <laughs> but they're adding in all the individual muscles and everything. In that, um, uh, Mark Skelton was a big uh, eye opener in into the vision of what they're shooting for, as far as the customization. As far as like you know, there is going to be you know a max and a and a min on as far as like the size of your character can go because he's got to be able to fit in the seats, mm -hmm. um, and. He talked about the movements being more like the and working with uh, getting their face rig uh, better uh, as far as doing the mocap and everything that they're actually want to because they they're taking their cues from Rise and taking it to the next level as far as like the actual expression because they want because of how Chris Roberts is wanting the interaction between the NPCs is to be like you know you not having to say anything you can see a gesture on their face and know that, hey, you stink, or you smell, or do I know you, you know, and they don't have to say a word. It, it, they're trying to make it more feel more alive. 
um, with the interactions. And then, they, of course, they talked about uh, the customization. Like, you know, people wanted to know, well, can you have jewelry? Well, yeah, Mark Allen is like, yeah, we're going to have Yeah, because that's, that's coming straight from their, their deal with um, uh, that other studio, that, that other game that they made. Uh, where they have you can have multiple uh, layers um, of uh, Kingdom Come, yeah, Kingdom, Kingdom Come, Come Deliverance, Deliverance, yeah. yeah. Um, I support that game too. Yeah, me too. That's a good game. Uh, so yeah, that, that's where that's coming from is that layered system. But but, but you know, they didn't really kind of they didn't really kind of uh, mention that. You know, they they didn't. Mark was more like, "Hey, we're working on making this work," and he's like, "Well, you know, you you kind of got that system from the Kingdom Come." Yeah, and. You know, when he was talking about, like, the, you know, the clothing and uh, what else did he discuss? Uh, um, the hair. Okay, the hair. <laughs> big thing, big thing was talking about the hair mm -hmm. that, you know, they're trying to, they're they're looking at the new, uh, what was the? Spline. Like, sequel? Yeah, spline effect for the hair. Uh, no me, chest effects. Now, me, oh. I prefer <laughs> my hairstyle, okay, and people probably laugh, I prefer like the new the new final fantasy hairstyles the way it's it just looks so real when they do the when you see the cutscenes in their characters i love how they do the hair in there it just looks so real and it's, it's good mm -hmm. i mean if anybody's seen you know um, final fantasy you know seven advent children that kind of hairstyle look more real and even uh, the characters the newer ones that they have they have that hairstyle if they can get that down and even make it better hey i'm all for that mm -hmm. now they did say about like you know, you'll be able to adjust your noses and your facial features. You know, they'll they'll have a bunch of people scanned in and be able to mix and match your characters as much as possible. And also, uh, tattoos. They did mention tattoos, and then that's when they made the comment about the tramp <laughs> tramp stamp. Mm -hmm. uh, but that led into the segue of customizing your ship. That eventually you'll right. be able to do uh, tags on your ship, painters on your ship. And even to the extent, eventually customizing it yourself, creating your own custom paint job, um, which I know that's going to be probably that's going to be their last thing on the After list. seeing what you did in, uh, in Euro, Euro Truck, Truck Simulator, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly I'm, what I was thinking. I'm really excited about that, but you know, I'm worried about the whole you know somebody putting a big penis on the side of their ship or something like that. Ah, right? And I'm pretty sure they'll regulate that. They'll, yeah, I'm pretty well, sure. How? Well, just like anything, oh, they're going like to they're gonna have well, to prove just, every single ship change. That means, like, Clifford, how many ships do you have? Let me bring up my list. Okay, you can't remember offhand. That's too many. That's too many. <laughs> you know. I'm sorry. No, no but no, I'm just no, saying, it's so bad. It's too many for you. Yeah, yeah Cliff, you, sound, you sound worse than me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, it's indicative that there's too many ships for them to police. Them. 87. See? Okay, so you've got 87 yeah. by yourself. Okay. So you, most people, I just say they have around five ships. Mm -hmm. Of all the people with all those five ships, then they, you know, they they have to then figure. And every day, what if you know? I don't like it pink. Maybe I'm gonna make it orange. And you got to send it in, and they got to somehow, you know, well, approve it. No, I know how this is. Okay, they can also do it in this way. You can customize your ship in a painter scheme, but it's what you see, not what the other player sees. Well, you're thinking of doing it like that. But then they that kind of takes they, away. Well, I'm, I know, but they could do it like that. Like, on, if you're going to do your own special, special painter, mm -hmm. you can do it, but you're the only one that's going to see it. Yes, there were I, boobies up there just a minute ago, guys. I was showing the uh, Infinite Realities video clip that I made for uh, Star Citizen back when um, they they, uh, they broke the the stretch goal. But that's totally me, me totally guessing. That's not you know. Uh, I'm pretty sure they'll have maybe approval process if if you're wanting like a certain little logo on it. Now paint jobs, I mean, they, I'm pretty sure they're they're okay with you know they'll probably put limits to that. I don't I don't know, you know they'll probably have their own little sliders and stuff. You could just do you know paint jobs within their constraints. But as far as like logos and special emblems, you could probably submit that and they'll probably send you back in a couple of weeks. Hey, you can use that emblem on your ship. For yeah, example, you, someone might have a giant vagina on the back of their 890 jump. <laughs> or on the front, which it sort of looks like a vagina on the front. But there you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't really think about vaginas all that much. So It'd be I'd like be, a flying whorehouse. That'd be awesome in the 890. Yeah, that's what Stockus is going for. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That'd be awesome. Yeah. He's, he's going to be balling in the verse. That's what it does for sure. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Welcome uh, to the 890 hump. <laughs> These are my lady friends. <laughs> 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 <In> the hump. <laughs> and the, that's how it's pronounced. 
because it's a Hagwire. It's a Hagwire. It's a Hagwire. <laughs> the yay now, is, is silent. Now, Domo, uh, What's up? we could segue into your into your uh, thing because you are I think dies are dies are a pirate organization and they well we don't not really pirate we just sort of like freelance and help people remove excess money from their accounts I, that's <laughs> ah, I don't know if I'd call that so, pirating so, so. okay sounds real helpful yeah we're helpful <laughs> okay. yeah people like Clifford that might have too much money we just release them from the burden of having the extra money think about how easy life is when you don't have any money you know you just, so you're just, like Robin Hood uh, exactly but I don't give it to anybody else. Ah, okay. <laughs> because that would be Wait, that's burdening them. Yeah, it would be burdening them. Right. We're just helping balance the system. I will take on everybody's burden. I'm sort of like the savior of the universe. Christ you know, Roberts. I am Christ. Christ Domar. Christ Roberts. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, after after they went into, you know, talking about the customizations, it, you know, then they started talking to, um, say his name again. I'm bad with names. Tony Zerubic? Um, yeah, they started talking to Tony about the uh, carrying your gun, you know, because people were wanting to know, okay, well, if this is going to be a hostile, you know, death, they, death of a spaceman, what are we going to expect, you know, because the big question of griefing always comes up, and then they started discussing about, well, you're going to, we decided to allow you to carry weapons down on the planets. Mm -hmm. Now, there'll be certain levels of security, as they discussed, um, like on Terra Prime, you know, if if you're on there, there's going to be high level security guards. There's going to be high level security turrets. That if you whip out your gun, they'll zap you on the spot. Now, oh, really? If, if I had I been didn't there, see that part. Yeah, that was it was a pretty cool part. If I had been there, one of the first questions I would have gone to the microphone and asked is, if memory serves, some of uh, one of the options for um, organizations and whatnot is that you can kind of be a part of the advocacy or the police service. In that case, if you are a member of the ad advocacy or a, a, a bounty hunter who is known to be extremely helpful to the advocacy, will you be allowed to carry your weapon in more high security areas because you are known to be someone who helps to enforce the law? So, hmm. kind of like a U.S. Marshal type thing. Kind of, yeah. Mercenary, maybe, or you know. Yeah. Isn't that because what you're going to be planning on doing, yeah. Geo? I plan on being Boba Fett. Okay. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I just put up a poll: is your, is your pirate org is your org a pirate org? Yes or no? And Cyberwolf mm -hmm. has a good point. He said yes and no. I have two accounts, so some people. They're not a bad idea, actually. That's what, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm going to do bad shit on one account, and I'm going to stay a good citizen on my other account. Right. Just make sure the two don't interact, because that was one of the other things that Tony was talking about. Oh, we remember that, him saying true. that. Yes, yes. You know, if you've got a guy who has been breaking the law and has been banished from this planet for carrying a weapon, and you just get one of your friends to go get you a gun and bring it to you, now you're both in freaking trouble. <laughs> you know, so it's... <laughs> but you know, I liked it though. But he said that that not to say that on Terra Prime that at nighttime the nighttime schemes. And I loved it when they start saying you know about I can't wait to be on planet side and time will actually change. It'll go nighttime or you can land on the nighttime and some of the shops will close and some shops will open at night and you can do back back alley dealings on Terra Prime that. Somebody might stab you in the back if you're going down that alley and you don't turn around and look who's behind you. And there would be no, nobody to help you, you know? So it would be it, a lot more difficult on Terra, though. Yeah, a lot more difficult, but it still keeps, like you said, it keeps sure. you on edge and it keeps mm -hmm. you well aware of your surroundings at all times. Um, and, and, you know, knowing Domo, he's probably just going to be on Terra Prime getting drunk in a bar. I might be with around. Otis. <laughs> my flat, my, no, not my, my pet monkey named Mr. Snagglepuss. Nice. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Each of them in their own stool? Yes. Otis <laughs> and Snagglepuss. Snagglepuss likes to walk Otis in space yeah. without a suit. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and while we're talking about, you know, Terra, staying on the planet Terra at the moment before we talk about Nyx, is. Uh, when they talked about the the tower, what was it called? The uh, the Terra Tower. Yeah, Terra Tower. Oh my God, I can't wait to see that. And you know, I loved it how Chris described it as you know you want to go to it'll make you want to go to these places, go shopping at these places, get souvenirs and stuff, saying that you've been there, take pictures there, and 
have it framed in your hangar and stuff that he wants them to make it an experience that if you're not hauling something, you're going to want to go visit these places that, you know, you never know what stores or what people you might meet in the tower that might get you good deals or tell you about uh, rumors in the verse that, hey, if you go to this planet in this system, you might find some goods there, you know? Mm -hmm. Now, presuming that one of the, the I, mean, I think we've seen a picture of the Terra Tower before. Yes, and I think the they inside. said it's three, three kilometers high. Yeah. You know, it's a big damn building. But I, obviously there's some kind of an observation dome at the top or something, an observation level, because they mentioned going up to the top and being able to look out and seeing, you know, Terra stretching out in front of you. And one of the first things I thought of, thanks to you, Clifford, was who are going to be the first people who are going to approach CIG and say that they want to have their wedding up there? Oh, yeah. That that thing they did in Final Fantasy, like you did, mm -hmm. yeah. Which which is like awesome. they, well, like they prove it. It can be done, mm -hmm. and and even going to that effect, you know, you talking about the spread of the city. Remember how they talked about it was this size, and Chris Roberts tripled the size of it. Like, is now gargantuan city. <laughs> it should be. It should be. It should look like Coruscant, but less smoggy. Less well, smoggy. I don't know. Right. Prime should not be smoggy. The okay. block, yeah. fine. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think of the picture I've seen. Oh, never mind. That's another city. There was another um, city that the retaliators were bombing, and it looked like it was Cloud City that they were flying, attacking. I'm trying mm -hmm. to figure out the name of that picture. Now, didn't Sandy show a little bit of fly through of Prime? I think that's what that picture was. Was um, I remember she showed a short, short clip. And because I'm thinking that was the tower in it, because there's this tall structure in this beautiful looking city, state of the art looking city. Uh, I'm believing that's like the first glimpses of terror. Um, but yeah, that scale, you know, and, and I can understand Chris wanting to make this thing because this is going to be a, a lot of the central sub, hub for, you know, Star Citizen uh, people to go see. I mean, you know, and of course, you know, you never know later on. I could see down the roads, you know, like he said, the game will never be complete because they're always going to be adding content that eventually, who's to say, eventually there'll be all out war and the Van Duel might come into that space of Terra Prime, you know, and that could lead into a whole new kind of gameplay. I mean, it would be really tough for them. Terra yeah. is pretty deep in the Empire. Yeah. Um, I see here. Uh, anything well, else? You yeah, need? I do. Actually, let's 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 touch on this wedding ceremony thing for a second. Okay. You know, we have to talk about monetization options after the game goes live. Now we have, um, the the store, right? <laughs> what? I, just, I was like, I just suddenly imagined somebody getting on the internet and screaming, "This game is pay to wed!" And I'm just, just shut I was just about ready to say this, this. This is pay to oh, pay to wed. Pay to wed. Exactly. Sorry. Okay. Well, that's, I've been doing that. Yeah. Would you guys? Would you guys in the audience? Would you pay for a wedding ceremony? Now, Clifford, explain your wedding before you answer. Yes or no? Hold on, everybody. Ex Clifford, explain what you did in Final Fantasy and how that is different than just like you and a couple of friends standing around doing a wedding. What? what okay. What transpired? Yeah. It, okay. Well, first, you, you know, you uh, you pay for the package. You had three like three tiers, and I think the top tier was you pay thirty bucks, and you know you unlock it to the, the supreme wedding, which is, it, it just gave you a better wedding dress and wedding uh, party favors and stuff like that. After you did that, um, you get into the game and you go find the quest giver near the chapel and it unlocks. And what you do first is, it was kind of neat. You actually have to get somebody to make you the wedding bands mm -hmm. first. So you have to go to somebody, a friend in the guild stuff, and they get and they actually, and that's actually part of the story because then you have to mention, did was it given to you gift? Who gave it to you? Was it your friend? And it, it plays out. But you get these bands made, you get the bands put on, and then that open, you know, you and your partner put on the bands, and then that unlocks the quest line where you got to go visit every city uh, that these quote unquote two lovers did back in the day uh, to Some find... Kind of lore story in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes lore story, and you follow where they went, and eventually the, the end of the um, quest was basically they fell in love because they went to all these places together, did so much together, you know, battled together, you know, did everything together, and they, you know, formed a, a bond. And that's what this bonding ceremony represents was what they did back in, back in those times. And so after that, you would finally get your wedding ring made 
And after you got your wedding ring made, you have to go to this guy in front of the chapel and secure a date. And they only gave you, and I think it's like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I think it's four days or three days a week that they would do it. And you had to be there like, and what's messed up is they're going by Japanese time over there. So I had to get up like at two o'clock in the morning. Oh, they set it all up for you. So they had it like a, a, like a chaplain or something? Yes, 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 out there. And you go out there and you say, okay, I want this date. And you pick this date business, and they secure it for you. And then, then they the last... give you invitations. And then you got to go individually hand out invitations to everybody in your guild and stuff saying you're invited to my wedding. Mm -hmm. Just like you normally would. So it makes it a big deal. And you hand out all these invites and you, hand, and you have access to give them party favors, champagne, and all this stuff. And when they go in it, they're in all the cutscenes. All these are, because that's why it's secured at these certain block times. You have an hour for each block because it's catered to you, to everybody that's in it. Because it, it's, you know, it's got everybody in their gear. Everybody's there. And it, it just makes it that much more real because, you know, it's like, it's not just a bunch of random NPCs. It's actually them. You know. Okay. So, okay. so, that, so now that you've explained it, now that's why I was asking if everyone would hold on. So would you? I'm just thinking of different types of monetization options, like uh, you know, little things like this that could not possibly be done in the background. Would well, that? What's that? Well, and well, people loved it because this was the, one of the first games that outright you said, don't matter if you're male, female, whatever, you can actually get in the game and have a little bonding experience, you know, with your partner. And people loved it. You know, and I and I kudos for them that that they didn't hold it to a man or a woman and stuff. I think I think it was great, and and yeah, it opened it up to a, a good monetization route for them. Yeah, All right, well, people are overwhelmingly people in the audience are saying no, but uh, you know, it, I think it's more left towards the role playing type people, obviously. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. If you're just in it for you know more of the blowing up ships and stuff like that, that's not, not something you'd probably want to do. Um, what about pay for a divorce? <laughs> right. Well, so then you could add that sort of thing in there. Your character's yeah. now unexpectedly linked. Your accounts are linked, and then you know you, you, you're done with this person. Mm -hmm. You hate them now. I want I you to divorce. You. you have to pay to it divorce them, <laughs> and it costs twice as much to divorce them than it does to marry them. Well, you know, they there's one thing they can monetize if they want it to in the game is like you could pay for, like when you get out of service out of Squadron Forty Two, you could pay for an upper level like coronation or something like you graduate that would be cool or something yeah yeah like that. you know something that's not anything that pay to win but it actually gives you extra flair you know like you get this and and, and it gives you an actual like in and um what about it gives you just a, a plaque to hang up in your in your in your hangar yeah something yeah, simple and, like that yeah and, and in final fantasy you could always replay that footage so it'd be neat if they give you like the special vod that you could always repay that footage of you in that coronation mm -hmm. you know and it's something simple, and people pay, you know, ten bucks for, five bucks for, and you know, it's it's an instant gratification. You're just like, wow, I get this epic, you know, you did it, you know. Or you or, can just go the regular. Well, go ahead. I was going to say, or you know, you you're you're getting ready to take off on uh, on some you know great excursion to go and explore some new sector of space that hasn't been explored yet, and you could pay five bucks to have you know your little. You know, like you know, you christen the ship. You've got everything on board. You, know, you just smash the thing of, of Venusian champagne or whatever the hell, you know, on the bow. And then you know, there's like a little news crew there or something that's recording the whole thing. And as you're you're taking off, you know, it's just like a little local news thing or something. I mean, and it, it doesn't have to be a lot of money either. I mean, there could be yeah. hundreds of thousands of people doing this. <laughs> yeah, it'd be one of one of your cases. Divorce is taking out a hit on someone in Star Citizen. But but yeah, pay thousand know, dollars to get rid of them, or you can pay this guy fifty credits. But yeah, I, I wholeheartedly believe there's many options out there for them to monetize this without it being pay to win. Just simple stuff like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. little, and a little lot options. Of people, yeah, and a lot of people were paying for the little flare, like the snow globes and stuff they had. People love those things. I love those things. I love yeah, I bought, knick knacks. I bought a um. This is probably the first time I ever even did this in the game. But I bought like a pistol, um, the restraint, I guess, handcuff things. Um, what else did I buy? It's like little little stuff in game that I could probably save the for in game. But I just bought it with my real money just to support the game. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I could do that. Real quick about the uh, the swag stuff. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a giveaway right now for swag. We're gonna start it in a couple minutes when we start our Q and A time. 
Um, how it works is you guys can pick any of the swag, any of the swag that you'd like to have. Um, if you don't have some of the earlier ones, I do recommend getting the jukebox because it actually does something. You can put some files in a folder on your computer and it'll play MP3s while you're in your hangar. Um, I need one of those. Yeah. But, uh, all right, well, let's go ahead and get started with the Q&A time. Oh, no. We can okay. probably get some of these questions here. So just remember, next cast, you can start off with next because we didn't get to cover that. Okay. <laughs> well, we can make, maybe, that's what I'm saying, maybe we'll cover it now. So. Huh? Oh, you want to cover it now? No, what I'm saying is, is oh. it'll be covered when we go, like, you never know yeah. what some oh, questions. Yeah, we go through the Yeah, questions. people might be asking, hey, okay. what do we think of this? All mm. right, so let me get the giveaway getting started. You guys go ahead and start up with the thing and we'll get going. Okay, so from Alex Vaughn. Having, hopefully, seen the CIG town halls, what did you think of the wormhole navigation mechanic, mechanic they highlighted? I loved I would, it. I would answer you, but it, that would be extremely offensive to a lot of people mm -hmm. and messy all over the room, <laughs> everywhere. Just you know. <laughs> Okay. I'll just say I liked it. Um, I think, oh, yeah, I think it's going in a totally... I, I, you know, I couldn't, it, it came out of left field. It was a good left field because I was just like, wow. I was just like, wow. You know, because when I, see, when I arrived there, I saw all that footage before they even presented any of it. So I was seeing this. I was like, what the hell is this? And they said, this is you going through a jump point. I said, no shit. And he said, and I just love the, and it gives, you know, it makes me want to go constantly through a jump point just to dodge stuff and, and to play it, you know? Uh, well, then pause. I just realized that the the stop, stop, stop. The keyword for the raffle is exactly the same as um, a thing for my channel. <laughs> stop, stop typing in swag. Oh my god, um, <laughs> that won't work. <laughs> Oops. Um, Demo made a boo boo. I said made a boo boo. I made a boo boo. Boat it. I made a boo boo. Okay, let's try this again. Yeah, we're gonna try that. Key change the keyword. Uh, it's gonna be hanger swag. <laughs> Hanger swag. There you go. Sorry, everybody. Try that again. And hi, Bad News Baron. Uh, good to have you here. Okay. Continue on. But I would also like to say I kind of called that, sort of. I mean, it wasn't that difficult to call, but I said, when we were talking about it, I said it's going to be like the, the, the Star Wars game where you have to fly along the... It's on the a rail. And you had to, and, oh. and, but, I mean, but you have to dodge the, the different, you know, cross spars and everything you have to fly around them and under them and whatnot and i was like that's probably what it's going to be like you know there will be arcing things through the tube that you have to do but what i did like was that um tony and chris indicated that that they'll be dynamic i was a little i mean i know when um shit i just forgot his name um tony no not tony not chris next one down uh Mark Skelton. Mark. Thank you, Mark. That <laughs> it's such a difficult name to remember. Um, <laughs> Thank Goldshirt. He kept referring. That's what I was going to say. I was going to say Mr. Goldshirt. <laughs> like, oh, Mark. He kept saying. He kept using the word organic, which is kind of true. I mean, it, it is an organic style kind mm -hmm. of thing. But it, the way he kept phrasing it made it sound like it was organic. I'm like, it's not actually alive. I mean, I know right, what he right. meant. But yeah, it was yeah. just the, the choice of phrasing was a little odd. Anyway. Um, I like the fact that they said that, you know, because we, we had kind of theorized that that since they are effectively living things, that they will change and the, the data will become stale and you will have to fly them over and over and over again just to constantly update your data and whatnot. And I really liked the description of, of, of how they were saying that, you know, sometimes these things are, are coming in and out as you're going through them. You know, it's like, you know, depending on how dynamic the, the, the jump corridor is. And that kind of made me think, okay, so if you've got somebody who is chasing you, you know, and you're both going through a thing that is completely, you have no navigation data for it, or you do and they don't, mm -hmm. and they're trying to follow you. You know, and some, I mean, you know, in just a second that there's going to be an arc between the two. You fly through that, and it just comes in and just smashes this dude behind you. <laughs> Sorry, I just, I'm there's got to really be ways you can you can that. take advantage of the situation, and you know, to your advantage. You know, yeah, you know, I know, yeah. you know. 
Jair, you want to comment on that? Yeah, uh, that's a, it was another thing I wasn't really um, expecting to like. I was looking forward to it, but I ended up liking it. Um, just traveling through there. The only thing is, I'm, well, I'm not concerned about I'm just curious how it would look is, like, say I'm going through there with my Carrick and I'm getting chased maybe by a few Hornets or whatever. Like, would it be like a big war pole that they could easily get through? Or would it be like smaller for them and harder for me and the Carrick to maneuver and get through? Well, they did say that there's going to be, you know, they showed the different variations of it. So there's going to be good jump points to go through that are more secured and stable versus mm. those ones that are more sporadic. So I'm thinking they'll have ones, but they'll, they won't have those little fissures that come out as often. There might be one or two that you have to move the ship, and it'll be spaced out far enough to where you can see it coming, but I think it'll be more calm for the bigger ships. Okay. And, and in your case, I mean, they also mentioned the fact that, you know, as somebody who is typically piloting a larger ship, you are going to have a, a predetermined course that you go, you, you, you're just going to lean towards larger, you know, jump corridors and whatnot. You're, you're not going to, unless these, these, these guys in the Hornets drive you to a smaller, you know, jump point, I don't think you'll ever run into a situation where you're going to be anywhere but on a route that is through jump cor corridors that fit your ship, would be my guess. Mm, okay. And did they say if, uh, were you going to die if you hit the wall or any of the, the war poles, or were you just going to take damage? I think it would take damage or knock you out of the knock you out of the jump point, I think, is what they were talking about. And then, about. depending upon how far your progress had gone, you would either end up there or cast back out where you came from. Okay. But would you take a little damage on there, too, on your ship? Okay. That's cool, then. All right. All right. <clears throat> Next. From N.K. Sharp, uh, this is for Geo. Uh, when did you first hear about Star Citizen, and how much have you pledged so far? So far. We, luckily, my pregnant girlfriend is gone because she would kill me. She <laughs> we all only have one ship, Geo. When the women are around, it's, we all have an Aurora. <laughs> well, yep, all one ship. But um, I heard about it <laughs> last year. Um, like I said, in January, I actually found it because of trolls. It was a it was a video of the, uh, what was that, No Man's Sky, I think they had posted, like, a teaser trailer. And mm -hmm. it was like, yo, yeah, this game's going to kick Star Citizen's ass. And people, you know how that goes in the comment section. I'm like, let me go look up this Star Citizen game. Because before that, I kept seeing it in the comment sections, I didn't know what it was about. So I just, the curiosity, I was like, you know what, let me just see what it is. And I'm like, oh, this game is fucking amazing. How did I miss this? I didn't even have a computer at the time. Uh, matter of fact, I just got my computer... November of last year. Mm -hmm. um, so that whole time, I just been buying ships. My first ship was an Avenger package, um, and then from there on, I just kept buying bigger ships. I bought a, um, I got a Carrick, a Reclaimer, a Redeemer, M50, uh, a Herald. I'm trying to get a Bandu Merchantman before the sale ends. Um, <laughs> might go buy some more ships after that, Ryan. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Stick it in the vein. Stick it in the vein. Come on, um, man. <laughs> can you uh, can you melt down some of the other ones? You don't. You're not planning on using. Them, try to get the band. That's what I did. Uh, see, see, I'm thinking about doing that right now to melt some ships, but I just can't put myself to do well, it. You, I, you can't. Well, you can always melt them down and put money back in and have Chelsea unmelt them. No, you. Clifford. It's after we spent three thousand or thousand dollars. You're already oh. way past that. It's not a normal thing for normal people. Oh, really? Clifford. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, like I said, Sorry. I bought stuff like this. Yeah, yeah. You know, I got little. Patches and stuff. I just buy all kinds of stuff with this game. But I, I, I'm at, uh, let me see, like 1800 I think now uh, with stuff. I got sh shirts, hoodies, uh, the patches. I got all that stuff, man. I want to melt my Avenger because I'm not, to be honest, I don't really like that ship right now. It's just not my cup of tea. Um, but I do collect all the Aegis Dynamics ships. So that's my goal to get a, um, a Javelin and an Idris and in-game. So those are my in-game goals. But right now, I'm not feeling the Avenger. I, could, I feel like I can melt that and go back for that. But, you know, that's, that's my main package where my alpha keys and stuff is on. So if I melt that, I lose the stuff mm -hmm. in that package. So kind of stuck with it. All right, new, new, new poll question. What's the better space penis, a caterpillar or a freelancer? Go. Oh, I thought that was, sorry, I thought that was three different options. What's better, space penis, caterpillar, or free, that's what I thought it said. Oh. Because it didn't, it was... As I was going to say, I don't know. Not, the, definitely the, not the space penis. Cause well, it, at least the cat, at least the caterpillar can detach. You know, the other section of the ship. 
And but space think, penis doesn't detach? I think the freelancer is a better penile shape. <laughs> From. Uh, <laughs> Got a little crook in it? Yeah, the little crooked. Well, yeah. well, no, it'd be like the caterpillars, like the penis, and that's the sperm shooting out, you know, because it detaches. Boom. No, I'm just kidding. Clifford, you're just <laughs> so nasty. You're a naughty boy, Clifford. Don't go there. So nasty. So nasty. Amazing, amazingly enough, even I don't want to hear about that. <laughs> <laughs> From Black Eagle Ops. Uh, the town hall, uh, they talked a bit more uh, about the instancing uh, sort of with griefers are put with griefers. Mm -hmm. uh, they've talked like about that. the PvP slider. Yeah, that was really good. They've talked about the PvP slider. What other player selectable options would you like to see for uh, instance preference? Hmm. I don't know really how they're going to pull it off. I mean, uh, I guess that probably we, it all boils down to how many different servers are there going to be. Um, you know what I mean? Is it all going to be sort of like one global server? Well, remember, they already touched on that when they okay, talked about getting with Google. They had talked about Google that they're going to have, a, you know, one main hub of global servers, and then they're working with Google to have satellite servers in different continents, and then that's where the cloud and all that stuff's going to take over from there. Mm -hmm. It's going to branch out. So it's like, boom, boom, trickle fed out, you know? Uh, that's, why the, that's why I was so happy when they said they're going to work closely with Google uh, on their main beast because that's what they need that that couldn't have no, been they are in austin course. um I, I i like the idea of segregation to an extent yeah um, for griefers against griefers. yeah but you know then it becomes you know maybe you just had like a wild hair up your ass and you felt like being a jerk for like an hour and now you're stuck on the griefer server and all these guys are you know Dicks. Or what if what if you're not being a griefer and somebody just keeps reporting you as one oh, and gets you too. sent there even though you're not doing it? Yeah, you know what is, what is the? Um, I'm pretty sure. Well, Chris Roberts said they had good metrics to measure that stuff, so they'll be able to look at his account, look at the account, look at the metrics, and see whether or not that guy's telling the truth or not. Well, I kind of like how you, if you guys seen how Grand Theft Auto did it, if you were like a, a troll asshole, they got like a, a special server with like dunce hats and everyone's in the yeah. city acting a damn fool i think that'd be pretty cool but depending on how much you act up like that i think it'd be cool if they had like some type of meter if you kept filling that thing up then you're getting sent to that server but if you like calm down for a while mm -hmm. maybe something like that and if you're not doing it all the time i don't know i think that'd be kind of cool no that's a great idea that's exactly how it should be done that way you know, you just felt like being a dick for a, a couple hours, and you got sent there. And if you calm down, just kind of go about doing your business. It, it's like a cool, it has a cool down period and brings you back. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That'd be the best way I can think of anything else. <laughs> it might also int be interesting to see either a, a checkbox or a slider that you know whether you want to be with people who are doing hard role play or not. Um, so that you know people who want to really get into their character and role play them can be, you know, in instances that are with other people who want to role play very heavily. I'm making a new poll. Uh, do you think there should be segregated servers, yes or no? It doesn't sound wrong at all. Well, that's what they're calling it, <laughs> right? Are they calling them segregated servers? Yeah, I know. Just, the, again, the phrase yeah. is... It is a phrase, hmm. yeah. So should there be segregated servers, yes or no? Okay, um, next. From Cyberwolf. Uh, during the town hall, Chris Roberts let slip that there was electronic warfare variant of the Avenger called the Warlock. Yes, he did. Uh, does this make you Drake Harold a redheaded? Does this make your, your Drake Harold a redheaded stepchild of the TFO? I guess the question was for Soros, <laughs> who's not here. I will allow him to answer on his own. Oh, I couldn't. I, my daughter was just screaming in the other room. That's okay. I couldn't hear it. It's a question for WTF Asaurus. Yes. Oh, WTF Asaurus is not here tonight. Uh, what's yeah. going on? By the way, if everybody's wondering, we're slimming the cast down. We're kind of uh, keeping it a little bit smaller. It's easier for us, for me to be able to do things like switch to other other screens when we only have four guests versus nine. <laughs> so what we're doing is we're going to rotate people through, and we'll probably have um, we'll probably have. Uh, well, we're going to have different people come rotating through every week. So WTF will source will be back in one week, and we'll have Bad News Baron on here another week and that kind of stuff. So, yeah. so all right. So if it's for WTF will source, I guess we can skip it, right? Well, not skip it, but he can answer it, you know, 
It, I mean, yeah. we will skip it, but but it is a valid question. Do you think that the warlock is going to make the herald effectively useless? Nah. Okay, good. There'll be checks and balances. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I was actually thinking about, like I said, I was thinking about trading my herald. And that's, if that's true and I already have an Avenger, I may just go ahead and me melt the herald away. I don't know. I got to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's... Well, if, it's Go ahead, Phil Gifford. Well, if they have their modular system, I will just buy both and then merge them together. Well, that's true. Hmm. Pippin's flying around some bastardized multi-ship <laughs> thing. Not only is it a red-headed stepchild, it is also a bastard. Okay. It's a red-headed bastard stepchild. Right. From Cyberwolf74. So, Clifford underscore Miku. Sandy said during Reverse the Verse that coffee cups weren't an option due to the oh. damage... Well, she said ceramics weren't an option. Uh, due to the damage shipping would cause, but travel mugs were definitely coming. Will you buy all the mugs? Yes, I will. I will buy every one. They, I, will buy, I will buy every merchandise they come out with, period. All right, all right, all right. Explain your fascination with this goddamn mug. Hmm? Go ahead. I just want one. I just want one. I mean, you know, I have so many mugs from so many different games and... And then, you know, Razor, and, you know, I mean, come on, I want my mug. I want my bottle, water bottle, or whatever from them. Just give it to me, damn it. Yeah, I would like what is that in your hand? Is, is that some Axe? Oh. What? Oh, I, I thought it was like, like Axe. Razor Canteen. No. <laughs> yeah, Axe. Yes, yeah, it's Razor Canteen. Okay. Yeah, it's a water bottle. He is sick, pretty guys. Pretty sexy, I'm jealous. We do, we do need to have an intervention, intervention for him at some point down the road, but... Uh, Wait until he's bought everything, then yeah. we'll have the intervention. And then we'll take his stuff. <laughs> we'll be like, okay... Clifford, you really shouldn't have this many ships. Why don't you give me those 17 of those over there, and then um, we'll call it Hey, Domo, I thought we were supposed to work together in the verse. Oh, here we go. Well, <laughs> I don't know. No, what, 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 I, what I fear is that one of these days, Clifford, you're going to be walking through an airport somewhere, and you're going to have some piece of Star Citizen you know, stuff, like a canteen or something that you really love, and security is going to try to take it away from you. He's going to snap. Because and you are going to go fucking ballistic. And he's going <laughs> to try to kill him, and then he'll get put on the NSA watch list. Yep. And then... He's a star citizen terrorist. Exactly. <laughs> he's already got a beard. Oh, it was over for him. Mm -hmm. You mess our lover. Ooh. Okay. We all got beards. That's right. The beard cast. All right. Um, I'm going to do the I'm gonna do a giveaway. I'm doing these every 15 minutes for the rest of the hour for these, uh, these swaggy items. So, um... Where'd it go? There it is. All right. Like the user, uh, uh, Siberian K, you got one minute to type in exclamation point claim. Exclamation point claim, Siberian K. Okay, next question. Do it. Do it now. If, if he doesn't From claim it, we'll uh, re roll it. it. Go ahead. From Cyberwolf74, Domo, would you prefer that they do another five to six hour length uh, town hall event? at PAX East in Boston this March, or would you prefer shorter one hour to one and a half hour size events? No, I would, uh, I'd, I'd be happy with that. I think, you know, I'd, I'd go hang out there five, five, six hours. As with long, bio breaks. Yeah, with bio Easily. breaks, and as long as he stops saying you know. That's all I ask. If he stops saying you know, because... You know how Skype works that you can actually talk without having headphones on because it does it takes the input signal that's coming through and it just flips it, right? So mm -hmm. that's how it negates the sound so you can be talking on Skype without headphones because it reverts. I will figure out a way to get you know and put it into some kind of like noise canceling headphones, you know, and <laughs> make it where it stops it. <laughs> you know. We were for those of you in the audience, we were, we were talking about this before we started streaming, how Tony was apparently quite nervous about speaking in front of people and kept saying, you know, all the time. Uh, not only all the time, Trindane, every other word sometimes. He would say, like, you know, the, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And Domo is trying to be a drug pusher I am. And, and, and make Tony take quaaludes. I, I, think, which... I think he'd be better off. Beta blockers, you know, uh, some Xanax, something, calm the <laughs> shit down. Relax. Everything will be fine. Then we, we all have... Find, sorry. We need to find out whatever the opposite of those are and give them to Chris. Right. We... Yeah, exactly. We, <laughs> we all have... Everybody who does any kind of broadcasting at all has a crutch word or crutch phrase, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I say so a lot. Um, Trendane, do you know what yours is? Uh, usually something to do with dick. Okay, cock, probably. <laughs> uh, Clifford, usually Miku, 
something like that. So anybody, everyone always has them, but usually we do it every like 20 or 30 words or something like that. But he was doing it like every other word. And it was just getting under my skin. And then I went and looked, I, I looked at the comments on the video and they were all like, you know, you know, you know. Go ahead, I think Gio. once he does it uh, a few more times, I think like a few more in, in front presentations in front of people, I think he'll be better. Because like I said, when I was first doing videos, I was, I look back at my old videos, I'm like, damn, I fucking sucked. And you know, I, I just got better over time. Oh, I yeah. Mess up yeah. From now, like I said, I'll probably be better three more years later down the road. Just take some time. Yeah, it's just like me. Oh, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Well, it's, it's just like me in, in the business world. I, I've done so Wait. many deals. Huh? I hadn't even started the, the the raffle, and people are typing in the swag too. How did they? <laughs> How the hell? Somebody <laughs> guessed it. Somebody guessed it. I hadn't even hit the start button yet, and it's starting to. Feel, I'm like, what the hell? All right, it's swag too, everybody. <laughs> uh, by the way, if you win it, you just have to send me a message on Twitch here with your uh, your your uh, what swag item you would like. And your uh, Robert Space Industries email address. Okay, go on. Yeah, I just gotten better over time uh, doing a lot of business deals um, over the years, and and you know the natural gas thing is because you're dealing with a lot billions of dollars, and you got these suits in front of you, you got to sell them a deal, and it, it it is trying at times, but once you do it over and over again, and saying, hey, you know, you're there to present a product, they like it, fine. If they don't, they don't. You know, I just you know you just roll with it. I'm sitting, Aaron. Aaron did the same thing. Aaron Roberts uh, was the same way. He was awful at talking in front of people, but he's gotten a lot better too. And I'm he sure said he hates it too. Yeah. That is my beauty, Cyberwolf. Okay, buddy. Hmm? All right. What? He said I'm simple-minded. Oh. That's what people like about me. <laughs> it's like that song. Yeah, like I said, you're man. a ferret. You're a ferret. I am Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just have to practice your war dance, and you'll be fine. I will be all set. <laughs> Um, from Cyber... Are we done with that last one? Yeah, yeah, it's good. We move on. Okay, yeah, just... Yeah, yeah, you know, we're done, you know? You know? <laughs> uh, wait, wait, wait. I don't want to beat the guy up because he's not a, a radio personality or doesn't have the skills. It's just that it was getting a bit... What are you showing me your nipples for, Clifford? It was just getting a bit out, of, a bit out of hand, you know? You know what I mean? You know? And I kept wanting to text Chris going, wake up. Oh, because Chris because, was sleeping. You could, you could see him drifting. I'm I'm sure it was probably warm. Well, Clifford, you were there. Was it warm at all? Well, you weren't under the lights, so it might have been kind of like too warm up there on the stage. And Chris something he's wearing the jacket. You know, who knows what he'd been doing before he got there? When when he arrived? How long he? Whatever. But you could see he was drifting, and and there were points where I was like, I've been there so many times, where you know you're trying, and I could just imagine Mark kind of yeah kind of kicking him under the table. Yeah, wake up, dude! Wake, wake up. Um, <laughs> Poor guy works a lot. He does. You see how much they, he's they aged? All do. Yeah, we got to do a comparison video when the when the thing's finally over with. It'll be well, how many years? So it started in 2012 or 10. When did it actually start? I forget. A little bit before. Yeah, it was 12, but probably a little bit before they've been working behind the scenes. Yeah, it's just roughly when he made that first "What Is Star Citizen" video uh, with the, with the uh, the first prototype. Yeah, site for, yeah exactly. And he's getting he's like seeing update that. He's, yeah, it's really old. Yeah, yeah. So he's like, but from that video till now. Oh, holy God, he has aged. It's like, uh, you know, when a president goes into office in four years, they age like 20 years. Like Exactly. Yeah. They go from being yeah. like regular colored hair to gray and big yeah. wrinkles and stuff. So it's like that with Chris. You can tell that this is stressing him out, man. I think... Uh, probably, probably gets tired of seeing all these damn trolls that don't know shit, don't have their info, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's I mean, even on, even on the forums, I mean, the, the, I seen someone on the, on the RSI forums, he was talking about how the voice attack was... Pay to win. I'm like, how the fuck is that pay to win, dude? Yeah. And then they already, they already, they already yeah. talking about how they're going to implement that. They made, they're looking ways to implement that in the game. I remember on one of the uh, attempt for the chairman. So I don't understand how that's pay to win. <laughs> no, voice attacks not pay to win. Whatever. Yeah. They, they, people just throw that 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 phrase around way too easily. You know? Very easily. Yeah. It's just but, it's, uh, it's a it's a stupid knee jerk catchphrase. I felt more confident in Chris Roberts's so to quote quote I have a quote health because of you know actually finally getting to meet his co you know co chairman the the lawyer you know is trying his best to alleviate all that stress from him to where he can just focus on what he loves which is programming in the game and my ties and if any of you Germans out there know what he said 
or those of you who speak German, Domo, Mrs. Domo, uh, know what he said in Around the Verse. I would love, I, I know, I, I picked out parts of it. Oh, well, I didn't actually get to watch Around the Verse. I'll have to go fine, watch. Fine. Easy peasy. Just... You probably could figure it out. But he said something in German? Yeah, because Will asked him, no, no, sorry, it was, it was Ben that was interviewing him. It's usually, well, or James, but it was, God, let's just go through the entire, you know, community. Anyway, um, he said, you know, so do you have anything to say to our German backers? And he's like, in German? He's like, yeah, okay, fine. So he turned to the camera and said something in German. And I'm certain that at some point in there, he said something about the best damn space sim ever. Because I thought I heard that in there somewhere. Do you know about what time it was? Uh, probably about 4.30 my time. My no, 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 in the video. <laughs> Around yeah. the verse or 10 for the chairman? Around the verse. In the verse. Is he even doing ten for the chairman anymore? Yeah, he did it. This he week. just did. Yeah, he did one. Yeah, he did one this week. Mm -hmm. oh, scared he, you, it was Chris, he, right? He showed. No, it was Ben. Ben and a white-haired guy. Just scroll through until you find the. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm scrubbing. It's after Bug Smashers. Um, mm -hmm. but you know, there's a point in ten for the chairman where you know uh, Chris was showing the floor plan for the new office that they're going to be moving to. Right, I've met a lot of our anyway, friends, next uh, question. Um, <clears throat> the Amazingly and enough, from Cyberwolf. Mm -hmm. Are any of you interested in the remaster of Homeworld 1 and 2 coming out in a few weeks? Yeah, people are losing their it. shit. Yeah, I mean, uh, okay, I, I went, went oh, cause in the audience, or maybe you guys, what year did Homeworld come out? Oh, God. Damn it, you would ask me that. Um, 90s, early 90s, 91? That's that why. Is, that is a Chris Roberts game. No, 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 it's not. Okay. No, it's not. Okay. Okay. It was. It was made by Relic. The reason I'm asking because I didn't play it, and people are losing their shit. Like, how could you not I have played it? it? But I think yeah. I was in. I was in the Navy. Oh, 94. Yeah, I was. I was deployed over in Bosnia, in 94. There was no way I was playing anything. I think I took uh, Wing Commander with me over there, and I played it over and over and over again because that's all I had. And Wing Commander in the. Uh, what was it? The Privateer. See, I haven't played that, or I never played a Chris Roberts game. I know people are like, what the hell? You never played a Chris Roberts game? I, just, I, I was back and forth between when I was younger, console and PC. That's back then. You could just buy a PC and any PC and throw any game in there. But like I said, as I got older, PCs got more advanced, and I had to split ways with that because my parents were going to buy me an expensive-ass PC. But like I said, now I'm back into PC gaming. But yeah, I'd have to look at it. I have the old CDs and storage of Homeworld um when it came out. All right, so because I didn't get a chance to play it, not because I didn't want to, but because I was in the military mm -hmm. and deployed, what, what, what is it about? Um, well, um, it's about, um, you know, your origins, basically. You start out with you're on this planet, and I, I love the story because the story is what drives it, and it makes it so uh, memorable. It's just one of those stories I couldn't put down. I play it, I play it over again just to hear the story. Um, but basically, you're on this planet, and they're, you know, and it's like a kind of like a desert, like dune like planet, you know, it's like deserty. Mm -hmm. And these guys are patrolling, and they find this ship in the sand. Well, in this ship, this derelict ship, they find a stone that is a star map, and it says, and the final words that they were able to read on it was, Hagaria, our home. Okay. And so, this, all the clans of this world go come together in one unity to build this ship to go back home. And then a couple years later, the one scientist, I forget her name, gets submerged into the ship itself and becomes the brain of the ship. All the hookups and everything, she gets sealed. And okay. she becomes she comes she becomes a, a home command or wing command or something like that. But she is the voice that talks to the other races that you meet along the way and the people that drove your ancient ancestors away from the home world come and attack you because there was an ancient law that the drive the jump drive that allows you to jump Every so far so quickly <laughs> was against the law they banned you from doing that you know and that was an ancient law that you know they have forgotten because it's millions and millions and millions of years ago. Right. well I, was, I guess Celindy Telemar just answered what it was what is it? It's a 3D RTS in space. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, you could just describe it like that. Well, that's what I was asking. I was like, what is it? Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Clippers going into the lore. It's all right. I, it's, it's, I asked. Yeah, you know, I was probably not as clear as I should have been. Um, yeah, it's like but, Farscape. But, yeah, I mean, I, as soon as I knew, because I've been, as soon as I had got wind that the guys that made 
See, first of all, there was word spread about Shipbreakers, which was the original people that made Homeworld. Mm -hmm. But they couldn't have the name because THQ had the name Homeworld. So before the fall of THQ, they decided to make Shipbreakers, which is actually a prequel to Homeworld. Yeah. So, but then all of a sudden, here comes Gearbox. They purchase the assets and they say, hey, y'all want the Homeworld brand? Come over to your new family. And thus, they got Homeworld now. And they uh, remastered Homeworld. I, I did look at two. the comparison video. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Um, yeah. It looked pretty good. I mean, it's, you can definitely tell it's an upgrade, but... Uh, oh, yeah. I can't, I, dude. That's why when I heard that they were going to remaster it, I bought that. As soon as it hit Amazon, I bought the remaster edition with the model. That model actually, I'm, I hate to say it, their model actually look, makes the Connie or Connie model look like a bitch. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. It's wow. just that good. Get so it's an, actual, it's an actually good remaster. It's not like um, <laughs> some of these other bogus remasters, like the Sleeping Dogs remaster. I think it was a ripoff. But you look at things like um, like the Halo collection, even though the online was fucked at launch, it was actually a good remaster of the campaign and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think that, that, a lot of these remasters, that's what it gets mixed up a lot. Like They don't really remaster. It's kind of just... Yeah, here we go. You can't, you can't make something more HD or... <laughs> Yeah, okay, compared to the old... now, the, So, 99, I guess, was the official release, and I was still just getting out of the Navy at that point. Um, so, here here we're looking at... So, what systems were around in 99? Let's see. Uh, probably a 40... No, it was higher than 40. Pentium 2? No, Pentium... It, 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 I'm trying to think of what systems were out then. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I think it's just a... Uh, and it, well, it was a Pentium fused on... Because I remember... I had an old, I think I had an old compact Presario when I was playing that game. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember. Um, but yeah, uh, it, just seeing the video right there, I just, I'm like, I can't wait to play that game. Oh my gosh. See, I, I get it why you guys are so ex jazzed about it because it was your childhood. You know, a lot of people, yeah, 99 yeah. to me was and, like just a yesterday, and, but to you and, it was. Well, yeah. and mainly the story, the story that came out of that. It, is just so it engrosses you and you're just like wanting to push you're just like i ain't going to spoil anything but the ending is just so worse that it's just you're just like i have to be the final thing of the game it's just awesome so it's a really good story yeah, yeah maybe I, maybe i'll check it story. out i would domo if not if you, if you don't like the gameplay and everything Wait until somebody posts all the cutscenes and watch all the cuts. Watch all the storyline at least. So between you'll, you'll so this right now, what we're looking at is like is he's just in space and it's sort of like a yes. ship leaving a dock. Yes, um, that's where they rebuilt it. The what? Uh, so what's going on in in the middle? It's an RTS, so you're like taking over, like you're doing like a StarCraft kind of thing, or, or yeah, uh, yeah, and you and you click on it and you build ships within the mothership and they fly out and you like coordinate them on the battlefield and. And stuff like that. Oh does. my god, Pentium 2, slot 1, 350 hertz. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And back then, that was megahertz. Badass. Megahertz, yeah. Man. When that came out, we were like, ah. 950 megahertz processor. Uh, yeah, we weren't in the gigahertz range yet. It's got a great soundtrack, too, they're saying. Yes, it does. It's And, and, and now, I mean, after they finish this, I can't wait to play... Uh, sh uh, Homeworld Shipbreakers, which will be the prequel to this, but it's it's more like land where you're reclaiming stuff. It's what leads into this, but it's a good game. Cool, uh, good story. All right, well, maybe I will stream it. I uh, I don't have much background with it, so I would be going into it completely blind, which I, maybe some people would like to watch somebody play it from from scratch. The only problem is, is it's bad enough sometimes playing games that are older, and people go, "Dude, you're supposed to take the left road," you know. And, all that. All right, real quick before we go to the next question, let me uh, do the next giveaway. Um, yeah. But the, yeah, that little USB model ship that comes with it, that you plug it in, and it lights up, that thing's... And, and I talked to the producers at Gearbox. They said, hey, as soon as it comes in, I can go down to Plano, Texas, and they will sign it. So I'm going to get it signed by the producers of Homeworld. You know what? I actually got one of the USB sticks I bought um, for a Star Citizen to the 16 gig. I don't know how, they didn't show how it looks yet, though. I'm kind of curious how that's going to look. Probably a little Connie or something like that. Yeah, they said at the time that the game could fit on there. That's, there's no way that's fitting on there now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, real quick, uh, it, uh, Striblin, you have one minute to make a claim, so hurry up, Striblin. It's a 45-second delay. Remember, you guys have to pay attention to the chat, because otherwise it goes to the next person. The, the bot does it automatically. 
It can't be any worse than Grey Goo. I'm winning matches now in Grey Goo, by the way. I told you guys, if we stuck around long enough, I'd actually start winning. All right. From Cyberwolf74. Um, on the forums, there are a lot of people panicking about all the pirate talk and looting a body killed in PvP and God. so on from the town hall. Are they pants. just being hysterical bitches? I know he said idiot, but I'm going to say bitches, or are their fears justified? Being bitches. Because even me, even though I'm not being pirate, I want that type of gameplay in there. I want right. that more realism You in need there. that threat. You know, we're playing, I'm playing an H1Z1, and I'm playing in a PvP server, and he's like, don't worry, you really should play in a PvE. You get, to, you get to learn how to build stuff. I'm like, no. I need that overarching threat over my shoulder uh, to, to, you know... Keep you on your toes. Yeah, keep, keep, the, suspense yeah, keep the suspense. Make it interesting. Yep. And, and, That's what and, makes and, it fun. You know, and, it may, and it makes you pick and choose what you carry on your person, too. It makes you be smarter. It does. From Cyberwolf74, have any of you followed Wingman Peterson's new company, Descendant Studios, and their game, STFU, that's Ships That Fight Underground? Mm. Apparently, they bought the Descent IP, so they may rename it. Yeah, I know Wingman was pushing because it was in talks with a guy a long time ago to get the IP. And a lot of people hold um, Descent to the, close to their hearts. It's kind of like Homeworld, you know, is to me. I've never played Descent, but, I mean, I wish him the best of luck. I don't, I, I want to see, I need to go back and actually see what Descent was all about and see if I'm even interested in it, you know. That gameplay I might not be interested in. But I think... Go ahead. Go, well, I think he's picking a good niche, though. It's it's something that's unique and people will remember, so he'll he'll grab a good audience from it. I think. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good business move. And shout out to Wingman too. He commented on one of my videos too. Cool. He's a good guy. I met him when I went to Austin with my dad. He's a really really nice guy. Yeah, I'm mad I didn't get a chance to catch all the Wingman hang because I kind of got like towards the the middle of it and then it switched to around the verse. That's kind of what I did too. You and I seem to be matching up on on, on our Star Citizen. History. Yeah, haven't played a Chris Roberts game. <laughs> yes, Trend Day when he he, got, he first got into it, he didn't have a computer. Well, he had a computer, but it was like a. It was not a good one. It was Might a forty six SX. Yeah, but now, <laughs> and now, and now he even has freelance or gig hard drive. Well, it was a and people one. people talk people talk about me. It's like, how are you going to buy all these ships? You don't have a computer. Yet? I'm like, I want to support the damn game. Let me do what I want with my own money. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. From Cyberwolf seventy four, did Microsoft really steal CIG's idea of the Moby Glass to make their Hololens? You know, I, I I'm I'm gonna hate myself for this, but I don't know what the Hololens is. People are like losing their shit about the Hololens, and I haven't looked at a single thing about it. I kind of neither, Domo. I kind of thought it. You, I thought I was gonna just like Clifford, tell me about it, because I figured you would know of all of us. Well, you know, what is it? So you, who knows? It's basically if you guys watch the. Uh, the Moby Glass presentation, how they were in the gun store and stuff popped up on there. That's how the HoloLens is. Like it'll, like they had a demonstration of a woman putting it in a pipe with a sink, and the guy was giving it directions, and it like showed the pieces with like the wrench or whatever. Or you go to the fridge and had like the different stuff popping up on there. Is it glasses? Yeah, like, yeah. Where is it attached to you? How? It's an it? augmented reality visor. It almost yeah, kind of like the Oculus Rift kind of type thing. But you can see through it. Yeah. So it basically overlays graphics onto your environment. Oh, so it's augmented you walk reality. Into your living room, yeah, you walk into your living room and suddenly Minecraft is laid out across your furniture. You know, so kind of. Okay, yeah, yeah, I did, yeah, I did see an article now that you mentioned because there was a, like a lady or somebody sitting down and they had the Minecraft around them and everything. Yeah, I did see the article, but I didn't, you know, been too busy lately. <laughs> yeah, I, augmented it. reality's been out there a long time. My kids have it on their DS. Yeah. Glass is doing like Google Glass is kind of the same thing on a smaller scale. Yeah, you can walk uh, up to a movie poster on Google Glass, and it'll, if it's an augmented reality poster, it'll start playing movie like the a video clip of it. There was a guy uh, probably seven, maybe eight years ago or so. He was you know, doing wearable computing stuff with with you know kind of an augmented reality thing, and he could say you know telephone and hold his hand out and it would project a telephone keypad and track where he was tapping numbers on his on his hand and then it would connect to whoever he was talking to. He would walk up to somebody and it would use the camera for facial recognition and it would project their information on their chest so that he could look down and see what their name was and, and all this other stuff. Now, he was projecting you know onto physical objects but it, you know, we didn't really have you know the, uh, the augmented reality glass at that point. 
So is it? Are they stealing the idea? No. You know, it's basically no, it's yeah. been out there for a long time. Well, hate it or love it, I think it's, it actually will be in the future. Like right now, some people are like ah, I hate it, but I think it's gonna be like real useful further on in the future. Probably like twenty years from now, I think it's gonna be everyone's gonna have well, that. Especially for I look at it for like doctors and surgeons also. Yeah. So when they, they, I could see them wearing these. It'd be like you know, just like they wear their safety glasses when they're cutting on a person. They'll be able mm -hmm. to actually see different pinpoints and actually see heart rates and, and be able to really see more detail to what's going on that they're working on. I think it'll be it, it'll be helpful to a lot of people, yeah. especially with like soldiers too. Like if you look oh, on the God, battlefield, yeah. mm -hmm. like man, like. Ghost Recon type stuff, like, okay, so you don't friendly fire nobody. We got some dudes over here, friendlies on the right. I think it'll help out tremendously. When I was in the, in the Navy, my job was a radar technician, and my radar sent air data to other uh, armed services, and it was all linked together so that one, like the, the main command ship, had all the information of everything that was in the area. And so it wouldn't be that totally unrealistic to have them send that same kind of data down to the guys on the ground, you know? I think it'd be a fantastic thing for a yeah, military. Yeah, you would completely dominate the battlefield, like mm -hmm. especially the countries who can't afford that type of stuff. It'd just be total slaughter. <laughs> yeah, and see, I would love to wear some, versus Google Maps. I would love to wear this on my head while I'm driving and be able to see directions right in front of me and just keep driving, and be able to look still and forward and stuff, and it actually shades your eyes at the same time. You know, it just I see the potential is really good. I mean, that's that's a good going to be a good product. Especially if the car has like sensors or something, even on your blind spots, it pops up in the AR. Like you got a car coming this way behind you on the right. Like I think it'd be cool. Yep. Then the the big thing the detractors would probably say in that case is, what happens if it screws up? You know, then who is at fault? The insurance companies are going to be the one who are going to be like, what if it? What if the system crashes? What are you still going to be able to drive? Are people going to be too dependent on this and unable to operate a vehicle without it? Which that is a, a discussion for way down the road, but yeah. that's, that's kind of with everything, though. Like you never know what these cars could be a recall, and bam, mm -hmm. they know it's a whole bunch of messed up cars. So I think everything messes up. Nothing's perfect. You always take that kind of chance. Mm -hmm. They're trying to build it into Windows 10, I see. Yeah, <laughs> that's why it's probably going to be free. Yeah, Windows 10 is going to be good. Yeah, because I mean, they could, they could, they could, you could have Cortana pop up in your living room. Say, so what the hell do you want? Why oh you my gosh. Lamp and bring me a <laughs> it is uh, pretty damn cool. Uh, a little bit even. I, I mean, the Oculus Rift is cool in its own way, but uh, this would solve a lot of the problems with the Oculus Rift. You know, the um, where you can't see your keyboard as you're playing, you know, that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. From uh, Cyberwolf seventy four, big freaking surprise. I think I think Bob just drag. <laughs> No, thanks, mm -hmm. Bod, for doing this tonight. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Bod. Um, which ship takes the crown as Star Citizen as the Space Penis, which we kind of already addressed. Yeah, we, did, we did a whole, we did a mm -hmm. thing. Right. The Freelancer right. does resemble the old twig and berries, but the Caterpillar not only somewhat phallus-shaped, but also penetrates other ships forcibly <laughs> uh, <laughs> and is filled with little men who then spew forth an explosion. Cue the music for, it's raining, man! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Okay, not really... A question? Well, it is a question, but we already addressed it. So, from Pappy Boynton. Uh, when will CIG realize they need to hire Trent A for voice acting? From uh, wait, hold on. No, no, wait. Before we go. Um, I know you're watching this, Sig. You watch it every week. And you put a lot of the ideas that we mentioned on the show in the game. So, um, you need to hire Trent Dane. They're not ready yet. It doesn't matter. They need to be, have you on your, their short list. We, do, I may well be. There's, we just don't know yet. They're 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 still writing scripts. They're still you know d developing stuff that they haven't started really looking at hiring anybody. There's when when they do, you need to be at top of the list. I want to be an ambassador. Just you don't have to pay me. Just give me a whole bunch of ships. And my, my, he my wants team. he wants ships and he wants epaulets. That's all he asks. Yes. Wow, I, th I thought you were going to say epilepsy. I'm like, no. <laughs> no, no epilepsy. He doesn't epilepsy. want epilepsy. Fucking Tarak <laughs> flying around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that would not be good. From Anfrap, uh, do you think there will be a sweet spot of an, uh, for an org size due to instances? Mm. Hmm. Yeah, there probably is going to be. Because if you have an org that's like um, Imperium, that's massive. Right, and you, you can't you can't possibly uh, have all of them in one instance. 
there's going to be a spot or, where you don't want to just be playing with themselves. <laughs> well, they do that anyway. But um, yeah, I think there would definitely have to be a sweet spot. Some, something in the middle there. Jim, want to chime in on that? Or? Uh, I mean, I. I don't really know what that one is. <laughs> okay. That's, I wasn't really going to chime in on it either. So. Right, it's good. Um, <laughs> From Jerusalem. However that's pronounced. Jerusalem. 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 Do you think they will allow us to move around items in our hangars? Yes. Yeah, they're talking about that. Not right now, though, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, little, maybe even not at launch, but you know, at some point. From W. Chris J., uh, they said that we could choose between skinny and fat. Can we choose height? I would think so. I think there would be a minimum, minimum and maximum height. So. Yeah, actually, Chris kind of implied that when he said that you know if you are going into the military to be a pilot, there's a there's a there's a height range that you know yeah. is kind of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wait so, a yeah. minute. Believe it yeah. or not, the, you can't be too tall to be a pilot. A lot of people think that cockpits are small. Yeah. Too. Yep. Five foot six, around five foot six to five foot eleven, is like the best. Is like the best range. For pilots, that's why Tom Cruise is good. That's exactly what I was. Oh, right. Uh, (laughs) Sorry, I stole your thunder. Go ahead. What were you? That's okay. It's it's trade off for early. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So Tom, that's why he was perfect for Top Gun because he was a little. If you guys look at um like a B one bomber, if you guys ever seen that plane, they said like the size of it holds four pilots in there, but the size size of it's like the size of a um a phone booth, so it's real small in there. All right. From Tacticer88, and I imagine after this we'll do the next giveaway. Um, oh, what, was the name, what was the name of the space game that the one single guy is making? I guess that's... That's for Clifford. Oh, that's the thing that Clifford was talking about. What was the name of that oh, game, Clifford? Lim- Limit Theory. Limit Theory. Limit Theory. Limit theory. He's taking his time with it, which he's he's doing good. Just Single you know. guy, though. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, 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 and he releases... He tries to release one monthly YouTube video a month giving you an update on what he's done. And what everybody's commending him on is that he's able to modify it on the fly within while he's playing it. He's able to boom, 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 and he's sitting there typing. It's really neat to watch him work it. While he, cause he's, so he's able to play the game and build it while he's playing it. It's really cool. So I like when people take their time on these games. I, I mean, I, everyone just say Russian star says, let them take their time because – MMOs, I think, like, the average, they said it takes, like, seven years to make some of these MMOs. Mm-hmm. So, what well, we're in, like, what, four or five years in with Star Citizen now? Yeah. And they're on, like, a way bigger scale of what they're doing in these other MMOs. Yeah. Take all the time you need. I'm, I can wait. As long as Chris Roberts stays alive, we keep him alive. He must stay alive. Hey, there's some of these people just wanted a few years, just wanted to hurry up, like, one or two years and come out. No, <laughs> it doesn't work like that. You, you won't want to play that game for very long if you. If you <laughs> Call of Duty. <laughs> oh God, yeah. <laughs> or, or Battlefield trending. Every oh year, new Battlefield comes out. Well, now in in EA's defense, that's a phrase you won't hear me use lightly. Mm. The single player campaign that I was working on for for uh, Battlefield Hardline is actually kind of fun. So. Well, I did play it. It felt a little bit like surprised. Payday, but. Uh, no, that was not the single player campaign. Oh, okay. Maybe not then. <laughs> Really, it's it's to, because that's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be like a payday thing, isn't it? And the multiplayer is. It's oh. very much like that. But the single player is is very different. Okay, I won't let you have to spoil it. You're not allowed to anyway. It, it's coming and out the in beta March. Come, yeah. the, beta, the beta's coming out. Uh, what next month? Uh, February, I think. I, I just seen an article on it. That it's dropping. I think like next probably. week. Probably. I think they were talking about releasing in March. So yeah, beta next month would fit. Yeah, I need a beta with that game because what EA is doing to Dice is just ridiculous. That's why I'm so oh. glad Star Citizen doesn't have a publisher. The right. Stuff what EA is doing to Dice. That's a fine example of what happens. Trendin can't comment. Not really. Before you, uh, <laughs> I understand. Let's go to the next uh, giveaway here. Yep. Tech, techie. Techiter, 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 eighty-eight. Yep, yeah, he's he's actually the the question that was just asked. Oh wow! So you have a question from him, and he just won. Techiter, yeah. you got one minute. From Jurisin, do you think they will be able to use the advocacy group? Advocacy group. Um, <laughs> uh, from the recent stretch goal to enforce the custom paints. No, I nod and say no. But <laughs> no. Okay, no comment from me. No comment over here. Okay. Sorry, I'm doing the next giveaway thing. Go ahead. 
Okay. Skip me. Okay, fine. From Grey Frog, uh, what's the free roam like? We don't know yet. Okay. It's hmm. perfectly valid answer. When we when we have an answer though, Grey Frog, we will be happy to tell you and show you what it will be like. Mm-hmm. From Mercia, the Terra Tower is three kilometers tall. Who is compensating? Obviously, <laughs> not Terra. Terra no. doesn't have to compensate. It's three kilometers tall. Earth, however, <laughs> those guys. Or not, Earth's more like a vagina. Well, it's yeah. Huh. That's where we're all born from. It's like a big womb. No, my character is going to be from Saisei. Oh, really? Yeah. Saisei is in the Centauri system, and that's where Misk has their headquarters. So. Oh, there you go. See, Trendane's our, our, our lore guy. <laughs> did, uh, did Tactica answer? He did. Oh, good. Congratulations. Congratulations, Tactica. Just make sure you send me a message here with your RSI email address and whatever swag item you would like. Do it now. Do it now. Do it! From Trendane. Just because it was a question that came to mind a couple of days ago. Do you think any of the CIG employees will occasionally occasionally take control of random NPCs to drive content, similar to Geekdomo playing that elf chick in EverQuest on occasion? Oh, yeah. You remembered that, huh? Yeah. That would be I cool, remember right? her name, but yeah. Uh, for Ronovay. I mean, yeah, whatever. So, I, I mean, what, what specifically came to mind was the, the point where they were talking about the bar. Uh -huh. um, sitting in the bar and talking, and I just imagine you know an NPC comes walking in every now and again, and sits down to have a bar, and I just I just pictured suddenly you know Dave Haddock or Ben or somebody you just doing what we would supposedly be able to do with our NPC crew, you know, basically jacking into these guys and or off taking no and no. you know <laughs> taking over control and turning to have a conversation with the player who's next to us and giving even if they don't trigger off a quest or something, suddenly this character suddenly feels more alive because it's not the same speech that he has every time he comes in or same array of speeches. He suddenly got an actual living conversation that, that can take place. Now, if the player then goes to that NPC later and says, hey, it's good to see you again, and the guy's like, what? Because there's you? nobody behind it anymore, you know? It would be really cool, though. Um, what if, like, uh, a guy walks in with a gold shirt, you know? Looks just like Mark because he did a full body scan, and it's actually Mark walking in the, in the bar, sits down and, and, and like chit chats with you, as his character. But he looks exactly like who he is. Mm. Well, it would be awesome. Yeah, it'd be neat. Even to get our own faces in the game. Like I don't know if you guys seen how 2K was it 15 or 16? I don't know, probably 15. How they scan the players' faces with the Kinect and they put it in the game on a on a smaller scale. And a lot of the people look like those characters. Like their character of themselves, I think that'd be kind of cool too. They were talking at one point that that uh, Infinite Realities, where they were going to make a, a special mobile booth to take with the pet to the packs and things. Yeah, and set them up. I, I just do not want them scanning my body. Mm, Domo body? No, I don't. No. Well, what about, what if, well, I want them. Well, Domo, if you go to one of those things, at least bring Otis and let them scan him. No. And with all the wrinkles. Yeah, you, you imagine Otis being at PAX, Clifford. Think that. Think that through. It would sound you, like <laughs> you never you never know he might do you a favor and yeah. start pulling on all them girls' uh, cosplay costumes and ripping them off. No, no. Ooh, we've got what ten minutes left? Yeah, and we've got about eight questions. Should we rapid fire these? Yeah, let's do rapid fire. Yeah, let's... All right, from Wash Doge. All right, hold uh, on. I'm more. Hold on. I hold on. People want to see Otis. He's just outside and he's in his in his winter clothing. Let's see, to um to answer Neil's question real quick, no, I don't have a peacock as a pet, but I used to live on a ranch house near here where we have wild peacocks wandering around. So there were a lot of dropped feathers. From Wash Doge, um, I'm worried that they said the planet side locations would be uh, kind of in the same size that Terra originally was before CR made it bigger, and they talked about how it was previously was limited to just the towers. So you think? In the other cities, we will be confined to just one street or square. Hmm. Mm. I hope not. I hope it's got you nah, can go. You I think can explore. Be grander. Yeah. Yeah. I think it'll be grander. I agree. From Pappy Boynton to the panel, VAT pro or against? 
well, doesn't really impact us that much. It doesn't. Everybody here, we are not affected by VAT. But uh, for those who are wondering what the hell VAT is, um, over in uh, the EU, I believe, the entire EU or just the UK? I think it's the EU. Oh, EU. Um, basically, yeah. they're going to be getting hit for all digital item purchases from now on. So if you buy a Star Citizen ship, uh, you get um, a value-added tax, which will, that's what the VAT stands for, and basically they're saying, this ship has made your life just that much better, and we need to tax you for it. Welcome um, to Texas. That's, that's bullshit. <laughs> it is I was just talking to uh, I was just talking to my org about that, because I got a lot of guys, a lot of my friends that live in Europe, and I just feel bad for them. That's messed up that they got to pay taxes on I've been doing that. Items. I've been doing that since the get-go. Texas taxes, oh. they tax everything. Well, I live in New York, guys, and uh, New York is like the worst taxes in the country for, for that kind of stuff. Are we going to start comparing the size of our taxes? Yeah. No, oh, no. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> from Super String Man, can we get turned in to do more sound effects? Maybe. From uh, Nick Vladin, did anyone manage to see this in Arena Commander? Uh, I hit an asteroid with an Avenger, and the asteroid started spinning so fast instead of my ship. No, I, I had not seen that, but that would be good. <laughs> that, cool. that physics was screwed up there. Because if that's the case, both should start spinning, you know. You can't, I mean, just physics, you, you couldn't cause something to spin without having some sort of reverse, you, you know, mm. law of... Conservation of motion. Conservation of motion, yes. Sure, I'll go with that. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. Um, from Citizen Kalis, uh, we already addressed that, never mind. From, also, Nick Vladin, Nick, uh, what is the point of buying two plus ships if they don't have LTI? You will uh, have to buy insurance for them even if you don't use them, or, yeah, I guess, maybe even if you don't use them. Chuck Norris could do that with his beard. Yes, true. Um, um, moving asteroids without... Oh. Yeah. I don't Chuck think you'd have to buy... You don't, you don't have to buy insurance from it. They're just sitting in a hangar. You don't... Yeah. It would be you to, to buy it before you go out. Yeah, but. yeah. That, <clears> yeah, yeah. So... From uh, Celinda Telemar, does anyone wonder what a Teberin looks like? And actually, there are images of them. They sort of look like the characters, the, the aliens from um, Independence Day. Yeah, big, I was just about to say big, that. Big head thing. They kind of look like that. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Are there any pictures of them out there? We can show one. Yeah, yeah, there are. No, Talamar? No. Tavarin. Oh, or Tav Tavarin. Tav. I, I usually call them Tavarin. I don't know. Tavarin. I hear some. Okay. No, I think I've seen these before. After we beat them, we folded them into some of our social... Spaghetti sauce? Thingies, oh. kind of. <laughs> <laughs> um, from Boil Down, uh, what do you think of the schwag items uh, that have no influence on actual gameplay that you can't get in the verse? You can only buy them with RL money. What do you think of this bag? I like them. That's fine. Okay. I I'm mean, honest. honestly, guys, the whole pay-to-win thing is to go kind of... It just, I'm so tired of it because yeah. it's You can not, either buy it if you want it or not. Not well, everybody in the world true. is equal. Like, there is nothing that says that you, you have to be... Just because somebody can afford something that you have to be able to afford it to. I don't, I don't think that's his point. Oh, really? I think, okay. I, think the, I, think, I think the point of the question is you can't buy it with in-game currency. You, you can't go and, and play Star Citizen for yeah, but that's, know, six that's years. That's the whole pay-to-win then... argument. That's the anti-argument for pay-to-win. That's to say, uh, this ship yes. that I did buy for $100, you can earn it by working for it. So this is sort of like a jab in that direction, I think. It kind of, but the other way around. Because it's like, you know, what if you can't afford the real-life money to be able to get a flask or whatever? Why can't you use in-game currency to trade in on a real-world object? Or something. I don't know. Well, you know, I kind of like what, even though Planet Side 2 is a pay-to-win game, but I like how they had, uh, what's that gun? It's a, it's like a revolver-type pistol. Mm -hmm. And you could earn it in-game, but they have a gold one that you can only buy with cash, like real money. So I think that would be a cool way to probably do it. Like, maybe you could buy, like, a f flask or whatever in Star Citizen. That's, like, a regular, like, black color. Or maybe, like, a diamond and gold one may cost real-life money. I think that type of route would be kind of cool with me. Give a I think so. Yeah, I mean, everyone, yes. But then that, that brings in the whole point is some guy walks by who doesn't have any money, and he sees you with that gold flask or the f diamond flask, and he feels bad. But, you know, 
You can still get a flask, though. I mean, it's better than not getting anything. Like some some items, if they weren't in the store, yeah. and you can only buy them with real money, at least that way he could still get a flask. It just wouldn't be gold. Every single week we come up, we, we talk about pay to win because it's just one of those things that's such a hot-button topic for this game. Yeah, I mean, life is pay to win. <laughs> so It's true. That's the, that's, the way, that's the way it goes, Are you flipping man. me off in British? No. But, There's two questions left. Well, let's do it because we've only got we got like two minutes, so let's do it. <laughs> exactly go from Neil ninety UK. Uh, would you prefer uh, your starfarer in your hangar or on a big ass landing pad outside your hangar or a dock in space? Big ass landing pad outside the starfarer. I would like it out because of the size of the ship. I'd mm -hmm. like it outside on a landing pad. A landing pad be cool. with like a loading like a loading tube or something like that. You could walk through to get to it. Yep, mm -hmm. yep, yep. All right, Geo. Geo, yeah, do you have one? Uh, as long as my landing pad can't get attacked by other players while I'm gone, <laughs> I would like to have it on a landing pad. Or on All a right. dock. From Hellcat Loot, uh, in Chris's BAFTA presentation, he mentioned offhand that Earth will be sacked by the Vanduul down the road. When do you think this will happen? I think it will happen down the road. Down the road. <laughs> head on down, head on down the road. But it will, but it will bring in some epic gameplay. And then everything goes to Terra. That's right, baby. All right. Uh, real quick, let's do... I'm going to do the final giveaway here. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, stop. In the name of love? Stop. The winner is Citizen Kalis. Citizen Kalis. Claim it. You have one minute to claim it. While we're waiting for him to claim it, um, let's go around the room. Mr. Clifford, a.k.a. Miku, tell us about yourself. Where can people find you? All that good shit. Oh, you can find me on Twitter at Clifford underscore Miku. You can find me on Twitch, Clifford underscore AKA underscore Miku. And you can find me on YouTube, Clifford underscore Miku. What have you been up to lately? Me? Mm. Uh, I've been up to lately working my ass off and <laughs> going to college. But uh, I, I don't know, I've been playing a lot of the Stranded Deep on my downtime mm -hmm. because I just like, you know, it's nice. It's, it's nice to be out in the nice, warm, sunny thing when I'm like got two feet of snow outside. It's yeah, yeah. It's it's been some game I can go to and play a little bit, and then put it down and go do something, and come back to it and play a little bit. I, I kind of like that little building aspect in it too. It's really neat. Yeah. All right, Trendane. Everywhere. All right. Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. Although it's Trend oh. dot Sparks on Facebook. And, and I'll link his uh, guide still. Oh yeah, thank you. Oh yeah, and then the. That, Galactic that, Guides. Yeah. Galactic Guides. We need to make a short, a short, short command for that. It's like three and a half hours worth of that crap. Now. You do up to three hours on it? I put I put it up on SoundCloud so mm -hmm. that people can listen to it if they want to. All right. It's three and a half hours. I should do it. Yeah, we there should we should get the SoundCloud link because I don't recommend anybody ever use the Robert Space Industries forums. Um, oh, burn, baby. All right, Mr. Geo, tell us about yourself. Where can people find you? What's going on? Uh, you guys can find me basically everywhere. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram at Geo Get Money, and then YouTube is Geo Get Money, and my Twitch is also Geo Get Money. But I'm got to do some work on my Twitch before I get up and running. But I do want to start doing my Twitch. Awesome, awesome. All right, guys. Well, thanks a lot for coming. Uh, if you guys won something, make sure you may, you send me a message. I know I got them all written down for people who won. But if you did win something, send it over to me with your Robert Space Industries information. And tomorrow, for me, uh, tomorrow is my anniversary, my stream anniversary. Uh, 365 <laughs> days without a single break, baby. And I'm starting to stream sometime tomorrow morning, and I'll be going into Sunday morning, and I'm going to sleep till the Super Bowl. That cool. is awesome. Yep, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm doing. All right, guys, so thanks a lot for coming. I will see you all tomorrow, and see you all next week. Ooh. Remember... It's nice to be important, but more important to be nice. Be oh, careless. pause. We got to go raid somebody. <gasps> and the base. The base. Oh, yeah, we're not nope. doing, there's no base tonight. Oh, no, oh, they, they, no they're base. like, they're just like, screw you guys. I'm out of here. Let me, uh, I'm just going to real quick see who's streaming Star Citizen. And we'll go, we'll hit, we'll hit a Star Citizen streamer. But just don't think, just don't forget about the base. They're out there. The base are awesome. And I love the base, but we're, they're not, they're not doing anything tonight. They're not doing a Friday night show tonight, so. Okay. Yeah, let's um, We can go. I think uh, what well, WTF source is just doing a replay. No, I thought he was supposed to be streaming. Is he streaming? Can you see him in the corner? He's in the corner. Then he's live. Really? Is that the way he does it? 
I, I don't know how he does that then, because if I do replays, I just do the replay. All right. uh, let's see here. Yes, he is there. He's live. He okay, all right, guys. We're going to go hit WTFosaurus. Here we go. Go say, go say, StarCast Raid over on WTF's channel. StarCast Raid. And I'm going to host him right after this. All right, see you guys. Have a good one. Thanks a lot for coming tonight, Geo. No problem. See you in the verse. All right, see you.